22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up and they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. The any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. <laughs> through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it. And I'm not afraid to say 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 it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You are listening to Black Westchester Magazine presents the People Before Politics radio show every Sunday, 6 to 8 on InTheMixRadio.com. I am your host, A.J. Woodson. We got back again, um, special co-host, Lorraine Lopez. How you doing? And Black by popular demand, kaboom, guess who stepped up in the room? Yay! Damon K. Jones is in the house for the All day. Right. Yo. Yay! Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And we got and we got my man Ricky Maxwell from the Westchester uh, Correction Association. You know what I'm saying? Friend of the show. You know what I'm saying? So uh, it's about to go down. We have a special guest today, um, State Senator George Latimer, who is the Democratic nominee for uh, Westchester County Executive. And he'll be coming through here today. Uh, we're going to try to get... Um, Ken Jenkins is also running. Uh, we haven't heard from him yet, but we're gonna try to get him on the air um, as, as well. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So, so. But I know Damon. I know Damon wanted to bring something. I, br- no, I brought no, that I just, up. I, I just, I, I just wanted to be clear. You know, for all those who, you know, say, "Man, Black Westchester, man, how you not inviting the brother?" You know, brother running for county exec. We've all we've have invited the brother. The brother. Mm. Yeah. So, well, he's he's uh, been on the show. And, right, and, and he's on the show. And, and King Jenkins knows that he is, um, he has an open door policy with Black Westchester Magazine and People for Politics Radio Show. So he, he understands that. But we were reached out by Senator Lattimore's um, team first. It is, it is, uh, it is. And, and once we were, because he wrote a, a piece on his Facebook page, this is what started it out, about his memories of Mount Vernon. And allowed us to repost it in, in Black Westchester. We did, and it got a lot of feedback. Nice. And then, um, and then we made appointment then to um, have him on the show. And um, right away, I heard from um, Kenneth Plummer um, in Mount Vernon. I guess he is one of those that might be representing uh, Ken Jenkins. And um, he was like, "Yo, how are you gonna have him on the show? You didn't talk to Ken." I was like, Yo, first off, Ken Jenkins has been on the show. He's a friend of the show." Um, we've reached out to him, and I know Damon personally reached out to him and said, when you're ready to come, the day he announced, when you're ready to come, let us know. Um, I received very little um, press from his uh, press department up until after that. You know, I started getting the press releases and stuff now. Um, but, um, you know, we can only do what we can do. You know what I'm saying? We open the door. It's, it's, for the pol- it's, for the, it's for the candidates and those that represent them to come through and make the appointments. We're not chasing anybody down. Um, black, white, green, I don't care what you are. We're not chasing you down. Um, we, we we have this forum and it's a forum for everybody and 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 to get the word out to everybody on all the candidates. So um, well, I'm, eventually, I'm eventually I'm eventually I'm expecting now. we will hear from his uh, office within you know very shortly and uh, we will have him on. But uh, just for those who think you know, and I'm gonna keep it real. Yes, Black Westchester. That's what we are. We're blacker than blacker than black. Black Westchester. <laughs> but I'm just saying though, yo, 
we're not going to chase down the brother. I mean, if he's not doesn't reach out first, we're not going to chase him down because he's black. We're not going to support somebody just because they're black. You know, I'm just we're not not support or support. I mean, you know, we, we especially with the politics that we try to give you a little bit of everything. So enough of that, though. So Ken Jenkins, um, his people, please call us and we will have you on the show. Um, um That's it, and we get get the chance to uh, talk about your candidacy for a Westchester County exec. Um, but I think we all agree, no matter who you support, Latimer, anybody else, um, Astorino must go. No, okay. Wait, 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 no, 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 yeah, 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 I am. Yeah. I am. I, I love that man 100. Seriously. Okay. Um, okay, well, you okay. can love him. <laughs> no, he's always been there. No, no, no. <laughs> we, I, we I, hope, because the, the lady always says, oh, you know, how we, we get all emotional. We love the guy. I, but but he's always been there. He's. I think he's a fantastic county executive. Uh, you know, I was on his tran- transition team in the governmental part, and I kind of interviewed all his um his uh, commissioners and let him know which one needed to go and which one needed to stay and stuff like that. So he gave me a pretty big, uh, important position in his transition team, and I Good. respect him for that. No, you know? yeah. no, no, much love, much love for that. And you know, hey, and he sp- and he spoke. And, when and, we had, and, we had. and I supported him in his his first against against Andy Spano, but then he was not pretty fair to unions and labor, and 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 um, we so he did not um, bring up his bargain of the agreement of the supportment. And, and why we went out. So we cannot ever support him again because there's a lot of issues that's going on in the Westchester County Department of the Correction. Officers are being hurt. Um, infrastructure is falling on officers. Um, high rate of assault. Um, and there's um, um, the main issue is um, and why Ricky Maxwell is here and he, he will continue to be the advocate is that if an officer gets hurt on the job with less than five years and he is disabled the county takes their health care. So, I mean, you know, this is a, and and it's a serious issue because you got young officers, 21, 22, 23 years old, you know, and doing the job that they're supposed to do. And if they get hurt and then they're disabled from from doing that job, they don't have any county health care. And they end up having to get supplemental health care. So, and especially when you have young officers, right? So you're not even making top pay. Right, so they get hurt and disabled. So now they're getting three quarters of, of, of thirty or forty, fifty one thousand dollars. You're getting three quarters of that, and then now you all of a sudden now you have to that, and then you're not able to work a full time job. So now all, all that you gotta have to buy health care. So you know, and this is a this is a situation um, the county government has known for over five years, and and they haven't done anything. When Officer Maxwell was just one victim. Now there's 400 officers with less than five years in, in Westchester County Department wow. of Correction. So now the problem is even bigger because and, and, and they sat back and they didn't, they didn't address the issue. I'm sorry, and they were aware of the situation right. since 2012 and 2013. I made them aware personally right. about this situation. And now that. Yeah, bring your mic a little closer. Put, make it closer to your face. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Every local official, county executive, I made everybody aware personally. County, um, county um, like Astorino, I sent them mail, certified mail return receipts. Nothing was done. 2013, nothing was done. And the, these officials go out and claim they support the men and women in blue. You cannot support the men and women in blue. If you're doing your job, you get hurt. You come to, you come to work to do your job, you get hurt. Now you have no medical. When right. you hired... At the department, the department clearly states that you have your medical for life. You really? are not told anything about a clause. Right. You, when you're in the training academy and you're being interviewed by SIU, you are told your medical is for life. You are, you are not told that there's a clause for a five-year, you know, you have to be there five years to have your medical for life. So do you think that uh, George Latimer is going to make a difference this oh, time? Well, I don't know. If he wins? Well, well you know. Yeah, I mean, th- uh, look. Somebody's got to listen. Somebody right, right. Has somebody to. has to listen. Somebody. It's a problem. Yeah, I mean, you just had three officers with less than five years got hurt. They just retired one. Um, knowing this problem, they just retired one. 
um, and he's not going to have health care. He's not going to have the county health care, um, and he's going to have to get supplemental health care. And he had, and and he was another one three or four months shy of of, of five years. So you couldn't even wait wow. three or four months, you know, to retire this guy. And, and, so and, and this is correction officers, and, right? This is this. Let's let's make this clear. This right. clause does not just affect <coughs> Westchester County correction officers. Right. It's all officers right. that work for the county of Westchester right. County that is um that, 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 like that county is. officers, the ones that yeah. we see in the county parkways. Everybody, every everybody. Any, county any, clerk. So you got the you got the courts, right? Isn't that no, no, you it's have that you, state you have court, no, state, right? right, right. You you have probation, probation. You have you mm. have the Westchester County detectives, corrections, sheriffs. And, and, and police, the police right. unless they have it in their collective bargaining agreement, and and I've been working there for 28 years. I've never heard about this policy until Officer Maxwell. So and and if and, and if I know if we don't have it in our contract, I know damn well the other the other unions of that probably, represent probably um, for any first responders or, or any any people that run to danger, um, we know that they don't have it in their in in, in their contract. And in a matter of fact. Um, I just got word from Nassau County um, Sheriff's Department that when they heard of our situation, they checked also. And they have an issue with their new officers that are covered under Aetna. So this is, this is, this is not, you know, this is just not a county problem. We are dealing with it because we're in Westchester, but it's bringing light on, on situations throughout in the other counties um, that officers are running to danger. And because of a county clause or be because of any clause, even with their health care, because that issue in, in Nassau derails what I was told, the real deals directly with Aetna, right? It's so so it's something that they have to do with the health care provider. But with us, it's, it's, a county, and it's, it's a county policy that is very outdated that the only people that can change it is the county executive and county legislators. That's I what I was going to ask. Right. Who has the authority to change that? Well, I, that's what you just said, the county executive. County executive and, I just want to say two things, though. So I have reached out to the Westchester Cobra Union President, Alonzo West, Alonzo. And, the vice, and the vice and spoke with him and Vice President Neil Pallone. Is that how you know that Yes. Name? Okay, who have both agreed that, um, and I need to follow up with them, and that's why I'm putting it on the record now. They both agreed that they would come and appear on People Before Politics um, since they believe that um, some of black Westchester stories have only been one-sided and have not shared their point of view on the situation. I invited them to come to the show and uh, share their point of view, you know, make their argument, you know, so, so people can hear both sides of everything. They said they would... Um, they will get back to me. They're either going to be June 4th or June 11th. We're trying to lock that in now. So if uh, if you don't see them, that's on them, not us. But um, they they agreed to come on the show. So uh, and that one, one to say <coughs> also, um, you introduced me to three people from the Yonkers Voice. I have one. I'm not sure which one I have. So this who? one is Robbie Mann. <laughs> Okay, we have Robbie Mann here from the Yonkers Voice in the house. Yes, yes Yonkers yes. Voice. Give a round of applause. Yes, yes. Welcome, welcome. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Um, yeah, I'm here to thank you. And, uh, and thank you for having me. And we're hoping to uh, have a good relationship with, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Definitely, with definitely. the organization. We're hoping to see a lot more of, uh, of what's Somebody going on the, with the county. Right. I'm happy to be here. And um, just oh. kind of taking it in, getting used to the show. All right, and I, thank um, you. I just, and, and for everybody who, for the first time, um, this is on. We also broadcast. Is it Robbie to IE or Y? It's R O B B I E. I E. And the, the show on the Yonkers is, Voice, and, guys. Is, is it is it um man with one? M A double N. Okay. I, I'm putting it on the um on your page now. Okay. Also um, known I mean. at. No. <laughs> <laughs> But I do the Roberto For You show for the Yonkers Voice. Okay. 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 And we encourage all and everybody, uh, especially we're gonna have, we're gonna have this particular group. Uh, if you guys aren't on it, Yonkers Voice Central. So okay. If now, you're not on now, it, get now, on it. now. I posted it, and it said that it was taken down by the owner. It can no longer be commented on. I posted the live Sorry. show on, on the page. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I posted, and there's a comment. I was trying to put that you're in the house, but uh, it said. Yeah, I should have warned you about Robin. <laughs> that. Could have been one, that could have been one of our admins. I'm going to get a text oh, out. Oh, okay, okay. Well, we're, we're trying to share it. You can, you can get it on our page, on, on uh, 
Damon's page on AJ Woods on my page. Uh, it's on the People Before Politics page. I didn't share it there yet, but um, it, it will be there. And um, you can share it to your page. And it'll um, go back on. And, and Lorraine can share it on her page. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah. Latino Empowerment. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so I just want to say that. And also, um, I wanted to, um, so now that I can talk about it, um, I got called in recently as an a, a expert witness mm. in a murder case uh, awesome. because they wanted to introduce hip-hop lyrics as evidence. And I got caught in as the hip-hop, uh, I'm explaining hip-hop culture to white people for four hours. Um, and <laughs> it was very interesting. So, so, so. I love hip-hop. Bas- bas- basically, <laughs> basically, it wasn't even the person on trial. It was his brother who was the rapper who made these little freestyle videos. And they had a white expert who actually works for the DA's office, who's supposed to be a hip-hop expert. And he actually wrote, <laughs> he listened to the videos and wrote down the dialogue of everything it said, which I had to correct a few of them. Um, and then his t- interpretation of some rhymes where he said the brother basically was saying in one of the rhymes, I'm going to kill every witness who testifies against my brother. <laughs> and basically, <laughs> it doesn't say nothing like that. But they were, because he was supposed to be an expert, they were going to admit this. And to every, you know, they had the little thing without the jury to see what the jury can see. So they were going to let the jury hear this and let him explain that's what it meant. You know what I'm saying? And they had me come through. So <clears throat> I came through and I did my due diligence. And, and they were asking me questions like, well, are there any artists that you would actually see do stuff like that and make stuff up? I was like, yeah, one of your favorite, Eminem. He didn't kill, <laughs> beat up, <laughs> maimed his baby mother. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> we all know the name Kim. He did so much stuff to Kim. Uh-huh. And, and his own mother. And even Eminem has even disrespected his own mother and killed her. And, and I've never seen that on TMZ. I've never seen him arrested. I, I've never seen a order of protection against them so they didn't know you know and then and i was who like shot the sheriff? oh yeah and then yeah. i was like and i was like you know i said who there's you know we're not we're not we don't reasonably believe bob marley shot a sheriff and he's mm-hmm. the, there's never been a, a warrant out for his arrest about it you know what I'm about saying? tax dollars hard at work right? yeah so that this was like for four hours it was like most of the and then you know then they called themselves a gang and i had to explain that um in hip-hop we used words like gang um posse um, clan. I was like, yo, Sugar Hill Gang, the most definitely cannot be considered a street gang. <laughs> the first group to ever make a record with the word and use the word gang. So that, you know, so it was just, I had to show that, you know, That's freestyle like this. I'd be and interested this. in covering ourselves. Yeah, though, we, I, I just, I actually place. wrote, I actually wrote my, um, a, a little editorial on it. Um, basically, watch what you say. Um, 22 um, million oh, black oh, victims oh, of America are oh, oh, waking oh, up. Oh, there we go. Watch what you say. Um, uh, your, your, what you say can be used against you in the court of law, but not my rap lyrics, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, and it was interesting. And this is not the first case. There was a case in um, that that uh, uh, um, a kid got convicted in 2012 in New Jersey, and the Supreme Court, New Jersey Supreme Court, overturned it, saying basically that's where I got the Bob Marley analogy, um, saying that it, it you cannot use the lyrics. Especially lyrics that were used that were made five years in advance right. of a of a crime. You know what I'm saying? That was supposed to be freestyle or whatever. And he got and they showed they pulled out 13 pages of his rap book and admitted it to evidence and he I got just, convicted. I, 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 I just don't know what to say about that. That's that's in, that's ridiculous. But it's going on all over the country and people do not know that you can literally and 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 then on a side note um all you kids your social media can also be used against you yeah. in the oh, court of yeah. law so, so, yeah. everything would work yeah. with everything they, they yeah. were going to bring me in the second day to explain yeah. facebook like yeah. that was literally no, that is admissible <laughs> <laughs> and, facebook. and that's what i and, and i had just had a, this conversation with the officer that 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 is going through something with with their perspective department and i told them i said the, please you know, stop posting certain posts on on social media, on Instagram, and and, and on Facebook. It will be used against, against you. you. Yes. It, it it will be used against you, and 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 people and it doesn't have, disappear either. It stays right, right. It stays forever, forever. And, and, ever, and, and, and they can subpoena it, and they can get it, and 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 right. And Facebook will give it to them. Facebook will definitely give it to them. So you know, we try to we try to explain that to people that listen, and and then you know, and then they say, well, it's it's, it's 
It's it's my privacy. No, no social not. media is nothing <laughs> private nope. about social media. To, look, before before we go any, word is social. right before <laughs> we go before, before we go any further. The keyword is media. The, the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> before we go keyword. Before we go any further, um, the gentleman who has just entered the room, yes. State yes. Senator George Latimer, is in yes. the yes. house. Yes. 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 He's a West welcome, Senator. Welcome, welcome. Yeah. welcome. West Chester Sugar County. Sugar Hill Gang, I was yeah. going to say, everybody say hotel, motel, <laughs> holiday <laughs> in. If your girl starts acting up. <laughs> you take your girl girl. <laughs> Nothing wrong with those words. <laughs> <laughs> so so we, we met, uh, well, I, I came across, I think I met you at a few functions, but I we, um, it was a piece that you wrote about Mount Vernon. Yep. And you shared your memory. I don't know if you're just driving through in your memory of Mount Vernon. And I was so desperate to find something positive to write about Mount Vernon. I asked you, can I post it? And it, and it, got, it got well received by a lot of people. Yeah, it was a good and um, a lot of people, I realized your connection to Mount Vernon because a lot of people were like, oh, I know him. Oh, yeah, he used to be my coach. Or, you if, Bill, if Bill, Crockett, Bill, Cro <laughs> Bill Crockett was like, Vernon, yeah. Billy Crockett said, I don't know if you remember me, but he yep, used to be my I coach. Billy. Yeah, Billy so, was my first so, baseman. Uh, see? Yeah, wow. <laughs> see? 1978. Tri State and he, the kid could hit too. And then and then um um whatchamacallit, uh uh someone else and then we posted it and um uh somebody in Mount Vernon wrote a nice com wrote a comment, we was giving you a lot of props, said, but you took your talents to ride, you have never done no and without me telling you there was a comment, you went read, you went and wrote, responded back nicely to the guy. Yep. Was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like That's no. what I learned on the uh, south side of Mount Vernon. Yeah. It's called, it was called back, at you. back at you. Right back at you. So I appreciate that. And um you were supposed to come on the show before um once you had announced and you had announced over the phone on, right. on several um publications but um y'all were you know i guess stayed over um the vote for the budget yeah for the raise the yeah, age in, can you speak on Albany, that a little bit we yeah. got we got raise the age done although not ideally it's it's better now than it was before okay but it could have been better still so what what is the change what 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 is the well, change what it, what the guts of it is raising the age new york state uh, along i think with north carolina were the only states that still uh, had criminal accountability for actions happened to 16 and 17 yeah. year olds and of course, if, if you put a 16-year-old in the kind of uh, secure, uh, max prison type setting, that kid is not going to get the help he needs to, to go in the right direction. So You're what graduate we did to do, a better cr criminal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's, you know, but, but what we did do is we changed it so that if, it, depending on the nature of the crime, uh, you would have alternatives to incarceration, and you wouldn't have to go into that kind of a serious situation. It depends on what happens. Now, uh, they got into the specifics of which type of um, uh, criminal indictments or criminal convictions would force you to go in and not go in and what the definition of violent is. At the end of the day, it was a compromise, and, you know, compromise means that not everybody is happy with it, but I think we felt it was a step forward. But I would revisit the law a year or two down the line, and there's one other piece of it, which is those alternatives to incarceration have to be funded. You have to have, if you're going to have people in, in a setting in the community where they can sort of uh, find a new path to life, then those things have to exist. You can't just say, it, this is what you should do, but then it, it doesn't happen in the real world where money is involved. So we've got our work to do to implement it, but it's a step in the right direction. It's a heck of a lot better than just saying, throw them away, uh, lock the door, turn the key, and goodbye. And oh. that I got from living and growing up in Mount Vernon as a kid. <laughs> no, Lived awesome. there for 25 years. That's awesome. And you see people who are fundamentally good people who did a bad thing, mm -hmm. and, and they pay for it and pay for it beyond a reasonable expectation. We're not talking murder, but we are talking about, you know, kids steal a car, you know, can't do it, but if it ruins your life forever, and that, that, that young man has a chance uh, for a better life if the right influences right. can come to them. Absolutely, awesome. absolutely. And I stand corrected. Um, someone told me that it's still on Yonkers Voice. So I checked again. It is there now. So yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> somebody named Rue Roz or something was like, yeah, yeah, us, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, oh, it's on there. So that's Ben. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he uh, is definitely. You can watch it on. You can watch us live right now on Yonkers Voice Central. Um, any questions that you have, real quick? I know you. Okay. This is your first time here. Uh, yeah. Any comments, questions? Uh, questions, questions, questions. Uh, congratulations. Uh, comment is uh, congratulations, Senator. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. I think. You, um, what are you congratulating him for? He uh, won the Democratic, the Democratic, Prime no, the Democratic, Democratic Convention, convention. Right. which was a designation. Uh, there may still be a primary coming up, and, mm -hmm. and if that does happen, then there'll be a competition, in which all Democrats in Westchester County will get to choose. Ken Jenkins, myself. 
And, uh, and then after that primary, if that happens, then it's a general election. Uh, Rob Astorino, the expected Republican candidate. Although you don't know. You know I mean? The guy is running for governor. When he may decide to just go ahead and run for governor. Did he make that announcement already? Well, he didn't. I don't know if he announced officially. What he did say is he plans to run for re-election. So you take every man at his word, every woman at their word. But, you know, he, he may yet just decide to run for governor. So you don't know 100%. You'll know in the next 60 days. Do you think you're going to have a tough run against that? Yes, absolutely I am. It's going to be tough. And because, first of all, uh, you're dealing in an environment where people are fed up with politics. Uh, They think all of politicians are crooks. It's very hard to say, oh, I'm sincere, trust me. Uh, And in that kind of an environment, there's a great degree of skepticism. And everybody who runs for public office has to prove beyond even a reasonable doubt to somebody's satisfaction. And uh, for the sake sake of argument, depending on where you are in a society, if you're poor and you want to see assistance and help, you don't believe anything until you see it happen. Yes. So right. I think we have a responsibility to lay out a real game plan and try to convince people that we have a plan, it's, it's intelligent, and it could actually happen. And if we don't do that, then people will say, I'm not going to be bothered voting. One of the things I, that, that comes to mind was is you voted against the the, the gun show, not to, uh, what was it, in 27, January 2017? Yeah, I didn't vote against yeah. it, but I, I but, you but I protested yeah, it. Yeah, I thought and it was wrong. Yeah, I did. The big topic around the country and here in Westchester is the Second Amendment. Mm-hmm. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yep. Uh, right here in Westchester, we held the gun show at the Westchester County Center. Current uh, County Executive uh, Astorino vetoed legislation to ban the gun show. Uh, what's your view on the Second Amendment right now and how, how it should or shouldn't play a part in Westchester? Right. And what, what are yeah, your plans? Let me, let me yeah. lay out my thinking for you. First sure. of all. Can I stop you real quick? David, yeah. say something to your mic. Um, One, people, two. Okay, One, two. he's on. Um, Charles Stearns was saying he, your mic wasn't working. So oh, we maybe I wasn't talking. Okay. So <laughs> 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 okay. Usually they used to be talking, <laughs> so, but I'm so, listening to so, them. So, okay, so your mic's going. Go ahead. Okay, so, good. so Second Amendment. Uh, To me, the Constitution is pretty clear that you have the right to uh, possess and bear arms as an individual in the society. So I don't debate that the Second Amendment conveys that right. But we're not talking about the right to bear an arm. We're talking about whether a governmental facility should take as a piece of business a gun show. And why do I say that 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 doesn't do the Second Amendment? It's any business can decide whether in any, let's say a hotel. That's the industry I came out of. If you decide you don't want to accept a piece of business, unless you're showing that you're being presidential in some particular way, you don't have to accept that particular business. I'll give you a different example. They have a, a trade show that, that is out in the Meadowlands, which is a sex toy yeah. show. And, you know, I, it's not illegal to have those things. I just don't want Westchester County to take that business. Let them go into a private sector entity, a hotel, or what have you, if that's what they want to do. Now, going back to the gun situation, the, the Second Amendment does allow you the right to possess weaponry. And the question is, does, is there any modification to that uh, right? Now, you have uh, the Second Amendment right is one of the first ten amendments to the Constitution, right? Of course. Bill of Rights, free speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly. You have free practice of religion. But the country said at one point in time to the Mormons, you can't have polygamy. We passed the law saying you can't have multiple wives. And, and you know, you could say, well, that's an infringement upon my right for religion. But the society says we don't accept that particular practice as being appropriate. You have the right to free speech. But if you slander somebody, you can say anything you want about me because I'm a politician and I can't sue you for libel. But if you said something about somebody else, uh, they could sue you for slander. You know? and, and you'd have to prove in a court of law that your free speech was accurate free speech. So it's just not open-ended. And I could give you other examples. Free assembly. We have the right to assemble and make a point. We just can't do it on the corner of Sawmill River Road and Tuckahoe Road lay down on the street anytime we want. You get a permit, you get a park, and you do it the right way. So my argument on, on uh, the Second Amendment right is you have a right to possess weaponry, but the society has a right to say, you know, you handgun, long arm, yeah, bazooka, uh, surface-to-air missile. No, we, we would set parameters on it. So we might disagree on this, but that's my thinking on it. And it's, and it's a, a, a very general line of thinking. You know, when we look at the Second Amendment, it was, this was generally... Uh, in the Constitution, not to go hunting, it's the right to, uh, to to bear arm and to defend yourself against a tyrannous government, okay. uh, against uh, intrusion. And what I think some of the what some of my viewers may even disagree with me. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I'm a very uh, uh, my uh, Yonkers voice is very 
uh, left leaning. So, but I think when it comes to a gun show, why? You know, if we're if if, if we were gonna have a beer and, and wine show at the at the county f uh, facility, and uh, every student against drunk driving or mad came in and said, "Hey, we don't want that." Since when do we cater to those of the, you know, that, that have a, a need of the few? That out, when when does it outweigh? Well, okay. make a judgment call. Just one, one more round. Does that on make this. sense? Right, I just, I, just one go more ahead, round. Senator, I just I'll be real to... quick. It's a judgment call, and everybody can draw the line someplace different. When the gun show was banned back in 1999, it was banned right after Columbine, and what happened in Columbine was a horrible thing. And at that point in time, what Andy Spano said as county executive is is it's a legal product. You can go buy it. You can go to a gun show and buy it. We're just not going to be the ones to host it. Let it be in the private sector. Rob Astorino changed that around because he holds a, a point of view that's different. And, and I don't agree with his point of view. So my, my sense is, is that something can be legal, but you don't necessarily want to promote it through the arm of government. <clears throat> the county center has a uh, coin and stamp show, fine with me. Model railroading show, fine <laughs> with me. Sex Style object show, show not, not fine with me. <laughs> Subjective decision, <laughs> you know? Uh, Damon, are, 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 are all the, the, the people that register to go and um, sell, I guess they sell guns, I never been to a gun show, you know. I I, I, I never been to a gun show, so I I, I really don't know because that's not my thing. But are all from a law enforcement perspective when and when you look at um, registered gun dealers and and the process of doing background checks and making sure that um, people that buy guns at these gun shows, you know, are properly vetted. Um, is that a problem with 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 these with these private gun shows because you know, uh, do do they properly vet the buyers that go that that go there, or we're we just going to say that anybody can go, you know, buy a gun at a gun show. A mentally ill person can walk up in there and get a gun at a gun show. So, what what is the parameters around selling the guns at a gun show? Because because we understand if if we make it more available for people to buy guns that intend to do harm, you know, we're, we're not. I, I don't think gun shows. From a law enforcement perspective, I don't think gun shows. We are worried about the people that are buying guns to protect themselves, or or, or buying guns for collectible, collectible items, yeah. or, or anything like that. We're talking about protecting the general public from those who want to find loopholes in in getting guns to do harm to people. Is 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 is, is there a back? Are they, are they background? I'm, I, you know, I'm I'm well, trying at, at to a gun, figure at a gun show. You don't have the mechanisms to check the way you do if you're a dealer. If you go to a store. And, and, and I am a dealer of guns at a store, and I'm registered and mm -hmm. so forth, uh, and you come in and you want to buy something, then I, I have the time to be able to go through a check process with you, and then you can come back and give me the money, and you can purchase the item. At a gun show, the transactions happen over the course of that weekend. And if I'm not right, but I can hold it together long enough to stand in front of you and give you a plausible set of identification, you don't really know, you know, it, what my mental mind state is. Right. So then, I would say right. it's more likely that you can beat the system at a gun show than through a normal gun deal. Right, and, uh, and, and, that's, and, and wow. that's, that's my point. Uh, I'm going to have to protest that because I've been to gun shows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the fact of the matter is is that even as a licensed car card carry, um, CCW, concealed carried weapons holder, um, firstly, a gun isn't handed straight over to you ordinarily unless it's a rifle or a Mauser of some sorts, and you don't need a background check. If it's a pistol... You're going to need that background check. They will check your uh, your CCW. They will not deliver that. They will not bring you down like Walmart and hand you the gun and say, thanks for your business, have a good day. Your background check still has to be done no matter how you look at it. And then afterwards, you can come and collect your weapon if you pass that background check. You're and talking about a gun show? E yes, yeah, at a gun show. It's, it's the most misconceived thing in the world because if you don't go you don't know and uh, people are afraid of guns I'm afraid of people who aren't taking the necessary steps to teach their youth about guns and what the harms can be well, I in, ask you in weapons I want to ask you a question real quick are you a member of what's, what's that national organization? National? NRA are you a member of the I NRA? Am. Okay so I, I, the NRA always fights for the rights of people to carry guns they and then we had an incident where a young black man 
who was a licensed gun carrier, right? He was a licensed gun carrier, got killed by the police. I that heard was no, horrible. I heard that no, was horrible. I, but for the first time, I heard no There was no pushback from, from the NRA. NRA. <laughs> I never, they were the quietest they have ever been in their life. Like, that that would have been the time, like, and, and, if, and, if he were a, If he were a member... They give you a certain amount of money to defend or go after and sue, and you know. I, but why, no, but, but why saying, does he have to? But I'm be, saying I don't Bruce, understand why no, he no, has wait, to wait, be a member. Saying, though. Being a member or not, they didn't <laughs> speak up for the rights of a gun owner. You, you know what I'm saying? Like that's what they do. You know, I'm like I would expect, and this is just my opinion. I would expect an organization who speaks for the people that have the right to carry that a person who had legally the right to carry got killed by the police. While and he was, it was sitting just like, in the car. Right, right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and he right? announced yeah. that he had the gun. Yeah, it wasn't that. a surprise to them. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, for that organization, well, that think... is the quietest I've ever heard. I don't want to make a whole thing of that, but I just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> and, and, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll just make it a point. that point. However, at that time frame, there was so much action going on with the media. Who, who wants to go ahead and start saying, oh, hey, you're wrong, or this one? We... Right now, in society, it's got to calm down a little bit. Well, the person that you know, cares about it, that young man that was killed would want somebody to, you know, make noise and, 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 and forget about the media or anything like that. Uh, you know, I'm, you know, I, I I'm bring, not... I want to bring it back home, though, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, All right, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. That has to be another show. Let's okay. get into the category. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, do you have a question? Um, you know, I, do you think that a primary, you know, um, will be good for the party? Because, um, you know, I, 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 I hear, you know, a, a lot of people in the Democratic Party in Westchester County, um, Reggie Lafayette, always say that, <laughs> you know, the party outnumbers Republicans two to one, this and that. But, yeah, now you, yeah, right, you're a Republican uh, <laughs> county, county executive. executive. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but two terms. Two terms right? So, you know, and in and, and, and the last term, which, which, you know, personally I thought that um, a primary would have been good, you know, would have definitely been good. Is a primary good to really rally the base up, um, move, or you, you know, to, to get to get people out? Because we're seeing um, some of the lowest turnouts, you know, in, in county election in, in county election right. history, you know, and, and maybe you know people are not people are not thrilled to c- come out and, and actually vote. I, I don't know that a primary is good or bad in and of right. itself. It depends on the candidates and how they conduct themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ken and I have debated four times already. I respect mm-hmm. him. I like him. Uh, I think he likes me. I would say we're competitors rather than opponents. Mm-hmm. It's, this, it's the difference of running in a race where you and I are both in starting blocks and we're both running and somebody's going to win, as opposed to boxing in which, you know, I have to hit you and you knock me out. That's a right. different kind of competition. Right. Uh, so a, a primary could energize the base, depending on how we conduct ourselves. Uh, keep in mind that a primary happens about eight days after Labor Day. So there is a reality to the world, and the reality is a lot of folk tune out during August. Mm -hmm. So it may be that, you know, we're out there running around talking to groups of people, blah, 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 but there aren't as many people there, or they're into the summertime pursuits, which you would Mm -hmm. expect. Then you come back, there's Labor Day, it's a weekend, then you go back to school, and bang, there's a primary. So you may or may not get the turnout that you hope to get. In Mm -hmm. my opinion, I think, and this is something all of us as Democrats have pushed for, we believe primary should be in June not in September, because mm. there's one other factor, and this is what helps the incumbent. So, so we have a primary, and we spend our time with each other and, and, and spend money and, and speak to Democrats t- on oh, that day. Mm. The day the primary is over, there's now 56 <laughs> days <laughs> right. until to election. Money. <laughs> one guy's got $2.5 million. <laughs> the other guy has got a handshake. <laughs> <laughs> You're now the candidate. Right. But I, so like I said, I don't think intrinsically it's good or bad. I have seen examples where it does charge people up. I've seen examples where it turns to really bad stuff. And, and so I would say for my purposes, uh, if we have a primary, we both have to get petitions. That's what will trigger primary. Mm-hmm. I intend to run a respectful race, an intelligent race. Uh, I'm happy that we have debates. May have a debate right here if you want. Uh, yeah, yeah, whatever, well, well, whatever, you think, whatever you think is, is mm-hmm. interesting to the audience. Yeah, absolutely. You know? uh, but as I said once, not in this race, because obviously all I can, I said I'll debate my opponent anytime except in an alleyway with five of their friends with brass knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Absent that, a debate is a decent amount. Yeah. Yeah. If we can disagree right. and still have a beer later. That's right. That's perfect. Right, right, right. So. right. Just don't do it at a gun show. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it at that beer show that you're talking about. <laughs> Any any questions? Because I, I have a, you know, I could just well, keep yeah, going. And, and, I'm and trying to give so, everybody. So, 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 I have, a, I have, a, I have, we have a, a different kind of an audience. I mean, right. A panel. I'm trying to get questions from different. Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, well, go ahead. What would you say to those folks that actually like Ken 
and know that can have been trying for this county executive race for many, many years. I mean, I know for the last 20 years that he's wanted to be a county executive. What do you say to those folks that, that are, like, angry at you? Well, if, they're, <laughs> if, they, if they like Ken and they think that Ken is the best candidate, and they should vote for Ken because they believe that. I'm not going to tell you. But how you, would you win him well, over? Well, hold on. I'm not, I'm not necessarily going to win somebody over if they've made up their mind based on facts. First of all, what I would say is somebody could say they've wanted something for 20 years. Ken ran four years ago, yes. and he's in this race now. So I, you know, I, I might want things too. You know, I want to be a baseball player for 20 years, but didn't have the skill set, so it didn't happen. Mm. In this particular case, I think you're looking at a campaign with two individual candidates, George and Ken. Ken has certain attributes. I have certain attributes. I've served, and, and, and I'm not out here to tell you anything about him, me personally. I grew up on the south side of Mount Vernon. I lived in one of the poorest neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. I was the only white kid in the neighborhood, and my parents didn't leave when white flight came. Uh, mm -hmm. I've, I've worked in corporate life for 20 years. I've served as a councilman in a community. I've served in both houses of the state legislature. Yes, sure. I've, mm -hmm. got a, I've got a diverse background. Now, someone who knows Ken and says, Ken is better than George, then you should vote for Ken. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are people who know me. And there are people who understand what I've done when I was chairman of the Board of Legislators, what I've advocated for in the two houses of the legislature, the person that I am. And those people will look and they'll say, well, I'll vote for George. And, and the deal of democracy is if 50% plus one people vote for Ken, Ken's your nominee. Yes. If 50% plus one vote for me. It doesn't have to be, you know, like the boxing match, like right, I said. Right. We're accustomed to turning campaigns into horse races. Right. Instead of talking about issues, what would you do about the 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 uh, what Astorino has done for affordable housing, and right. I would and, and I would talk about that as what I would right. do. And he'll talk about what he's going to do, not the two of you guys. And do you like each other? Or, you know, right. what kind of cocktail do you drink? No, I don't like right. that. You do, you know. well, and so, so Lorraine, that that would be my my attitude about circumstances. But if somebody knows Ken's liked him, he's a he's a smart guy. I like him. I have nothing bad to say about him. If you know him and you want him, vote for him. But for me, I will tell you what I've done and what I've tried to. When I became chairman of the board of legislators 20 years ago. We opened up that place like it hadn't been opened up before. We hired more people, white person that I am. We had more mm -hmm. people of color uh, that we ever had before. We created the Hispanic Opportunity Seat. Mm -hmm. Never was created before that. Oh, I and, remember and, that seat. And we didn't trade off the three African-American seats, because sometimes that's what you do. You play one before the other. The other. That, that's right. Now you've got five folk of color on the board out of 17, and that's because we approach the need properly and not inappropriately. And so I would talk about the things that I've done in a positive light, and if that's enough to persuade people, good. If it isn't, that's democracy. Mm -hmm. And then I will probably go out the night of the primary if I lose, have a couple of drinks, have somebody drive me home, cry for a day, <laughs> and go back to work, you know? You know be football I, season, and I'll be able to watch the NFL every Saturday, Sunday, you know? It's, I think a lot of people that are just hearing your name, you know, they, knowing you from being a senator, that they didn't know that you were a county legislator. Right. So um, can you, can you for the listeners, yep. can you go and can you just explain what, you know, y how long you was there and, and what you did when you was a county, what okay. you accomplished when you well, was a I county was a county, I was elected county legislator in 1991, and the district that I represented was Larchmont, Mamaroneck, and Rye, and it was never held by a Democrat when I won that seat. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and that was a tough race, and I've had a lot of tough races mm -hmm. like that. My three Senate races, my first council race in Rye City. Rye City is a heavily Republican community. I ran as a Democrat. I was the only Democrat to win the year that I ran, which was 30 years ago, 1987. But I knocked on doors. I met people. And I was able to move enough votes from the Republican side to actually win the council and win the county seat. So I was in the county legislature for 13 years. While I was there, I spent four years as chairman, and I was the first Democrat ever to run the board. While I was there, we did a redistricting plan that was a fair redistricting plan. It's the one that opened up an Hispanic seat, maintained the African-American seat. We had public hearings. They never did that before. You know, we opened up, uh, we, we had input uh, before we did the plan. Usually you do a redistricting plan. Guys in the back room cook up a plan. That's, that's the 17th legis legislative district. Right. Well, that's the one, that's the 17th is the one that is, the, is, is now targeted to be a Hispanic, Hispanic opportunity. opportunity seat. Uh, so uh, during that period of time, we passed uh, uh, the Human Rights Commission legislation. Andre Stewart Cousins mm -hmm. was the author of it, yes. but uh, you know, it was my responsibility to help engineer it, and we mm -hmm. got three Republican votes for it. We got it passed, and while I'm not happy with the way that is operation is going now under, mm -hmm. under Rob, uh, I think the original intent was, was to give a place for people who have felt wronged to go and get attention for that wrong. Right. 
And, right. and that was a good thing that we did in those days. We passed, um, I don't know how interesting this is, but we're the, it was my board under my direction that put our meetings on cable television, gavel to gavel. They were never seen before that. Now, they're boring. I'm not going to say that, <laughs> oh, let's go see the county board meeting. It's on TV tonight. But the point being that it was hidden before that. And, and we opened that process up. And, and so that was a positive step. We did environmental legislation. We, did, we tried to uh, deal with the waste haulers law, which is, you know, that's a tough industry in this, in this uh, world. Uh, a lot of folk, not a lot of competition. And, you know, folks who are well-connected tend to get the contracts. But we did a number of things as a legislature and me leading the, as charge as chair. And then I think very important to note, I served two terms as chairman. I could have run for third term as chair, but I didn't. And then I said, nope, time for somebody else. The somebody else was Lois Bronze, mm -hmm. first woman, first African-American, who we as Democrats supported and voted for, mm -hmm. given, given a woman uh, that opportunity. So many years later, in the state legislature, I was part of a group of people that voted for Andre Stewart Cousins to become head of the Democratic Conference. So uh, white man that I am, I saw opportunities for, for folk of color to have a chance for advancement as well. So... Um, you know, I'm not going to go on and on because this is one like, like you lose all your audience listening to this <laughs> stuff. But the point is, is that that record that I have, uh, I left the board in 2004. If people have come into the area any time since then, they wouldn't know this. It's not like American history that you study the county board of legislators. But, but we had a very strong record. And we cut taxes in those days. But we didn't do it on gimmicks. We did it because we had good revenue. We had sales tax revenue was booming. Not, not so great now. Everybody's buying stuff online. Bricks and mortar businesses are having a hard go of it. Mm -hmm. So it's harder to make projections and some of those monies. But when we had those resources, we were able to cut taxes while we were doing these other good things. And we did it in a cooperative environment. So I'm proud of those days, even though they were a while ago. And, and I would look at that kind of cooperation if I'm county executive, to work across the aisle if we can, to work with the legislature in a positive light. You know what it can be like. Sometimes you get guys, mayor, governor, county executive, I'm the king, I know everything, you're a councilman, you don't know anything. That's right. not me. That's right. never been me in my right. career. You know. I want to I want to say a couple of things. Once I'm I'm, I'm looking um the the Yonkers um, Yonkers Voice um, Central page. Um, some people say they they cannot watch the live feed. I don't know why it says, but on the video it says click for more. I guess you got to click that. And anybody doing it for the first time, the video is muted by default. So you have, actually have to turn your volume up. Right. Um, just so everybody knows. And we got a couple of um, Brenda L. Crump, of course. Is just checking out the show and um, contributing, um, putting links to everything. <laughs> she put your link as soon as you came in. She put your link to your to your page. Um, Kevin Kevin Bunch said he's listening. Uh, we have who else? Corey Pegues, uh, Karen DeCosta Edmondson. Hey Karen, what's up? Samuel Rivers, Alan Glover said, girl. "Go ahead, D. The desert is listening." Um, Anthony Wright, uh, Terry Buffalo. Uh, it was a cousin, right? Yeah, um, North Carolina is listening. Um, Cliff, <laughs> Clifton, Clifton <laughs> Earl Abrams, uh, Cynthia Marshall, uh, Maurice <clears throat> Miller, Margarita Johnson Tolson. Um, uh, I'm not going to repeat <laughs> Sam's remark. Um, <laughs> but but it's, it's on there. You can read it for yourself. Um, and anybody else who's, who's tuning in, um, we appreciate you listening. Um, if you actually have any questions, um, type them into the uh, Facebook page, and we will read them out for the senator. Um, now, I know um, while you're running for office right now um, that he's dealing with, um, he's having a situation. I don't know if you want to bring up the situation you're dealing with right now uh, with, with the county. Yes, yes. And, and, and just have you give your thoughts sure. on it. First, let me say <laughs> it's a pleasure, um, Senator Lattimore, being in your presence. Um, My pleasure. It's a county policy that um, if an officer is hurt before um, they reach five years on a job, their medical benefits are taken away from them. Hmm. Now, when, when you're initially hired, um, you are told that your medical is for life. Um, I'm speaking about this because it happened to me. I was retired out in 2012 from an inmate assault right. defending another officer. And um, I, I was never told that my medical was taken away from me. Um, about a year and a half later, I found out that they um, took my medical away from me. I've been fighting since 2012 um, to get an answer, to get um, 
have somebody give me some type of answer uh, about what was going on. I, you know, I, I mean, I have paperwork here, over 600, I mean, over um, 60 certified mails, return receipts to um, County Executive Astorino, the union, um, various elected officials, and no one had an answer for me. And the sad thing about it is that this happened to me in 2012. This is happening every day now right. in some agencies. Um, Westchester County Department of Correction, um, don't quote me on this, I think it's 40, 50% now of the officers are um, bought in with, that are working now have less than five years. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on this number two. I think it's two to three officers, I think within the last two to three months, give or take, right. that were retired out before they reached their fifth year. Well, it's one that's a definite. Oh, but we think, But we think two more it will not be coming back and they have less than less than five years on now, now and to be fair I know that you don't hold the position and you probably have never Damon he worked 27 years and he's just hearing about it because of this case so I'm, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm quite sure I'm quite sure you may not know anything about this but yeah, I just I wanted to specific, the but, specific but on this case or, but yeah, I just the, wanted you yeah I wanted him to bring that up and because just, you know, yeah. the reason why we're saying it because it's real big with correction officers sure. with, with, with this issue and and if 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 the county government is really not um, being responsive to the needs right. of, of officers that actually give put their life on the line, you know, correction officers shouldn't be no different than police officers. You know, right. our job people just don't, we, they just don't see what we do. Right. But so, this five year clause is for all officers, right? Correct? Well, well, yeah, 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 it's all county, county, right? yeah, it's all county now. Now, I, I don't know the specifics right. of it. One of the things that uh, that I would want to look into, and, and, mm -hmm. and if you've had other people look into this, and we can talk offline, I give you my okay. information. We'll talk. Um, the, uh, my assumption is is that there is no current contract in place for COBA because most of all of these unions uh, have, have not had updated uh, contracts negotiated and approved by the county executive. No, And that they're correct, two correct. and three and four and five correct. and six years behind. So my first question would be, and I'd have to research this, mm -hmm. is is that provision built into the, the prior contract and is that just being no, sir. Uh, extended or, how, or is that no, no, sir. It's, it's a county a, it's policy? A, it's a county policy. Right. So it means it could be changed by the county if the county that, wanted to change it. I thought so. And, and, and my sense is, ba built off of what you just mm -hmm. said, is that we've got in general, not just in corrections as you're describing mm -hmm. it, but we've got a very demoralized county workforce over the right. last few years because the general sense is, is that the leadership of the county does not have for people who work for the counties back mm. on these yeah. things. Right. And if you are out there in certain, I mean, in any job you could, in theory, uh, lose your life. But if you're a police officer, correction officer, there isn't a fire component, but a fire officer, these are jobs where you, where you use your physicality up while you're performing them. That's why you retire younger and earlier. Yeah. Right. It's not like me being a, you know, some sort of white-collar executive and mm. I make it all the way to 65. And, and the, the chance of, of physical injury, damage, or death to you is much, much higher in those positions. Yes. Well, so they should be treated in a different fashion. As a principle, what you described to me is abhorrent, that, mm -hmm. that there would be a way to, to deny you medical benefits that came because you were doing your job at the time of your job. Exactly. But I'd have to look into understanding yes. what the policy yes. was, Agreed. and then you know, Agreed. in theory, change it where I'd be county executive. I don't want to go too far until I know more about Agreed. it. Agreed. Agreed. But I'm willing to have further dialogue yes. offline yes. so you can help yes. me understand Definitely. it. Definitely. And, and depending on who you've had work on these kinds of things, you know. But I, but I do know, you know, look, where I grew up, I had friends of mine who wanted to police work, and and I have you know relatives in my family who were police officers, you know, long gone now. And the 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 danger factor and and correction and those jobs is much much higher. Mm -hmm. And there are provisions that I would look for for police fire correction that I might not look for in other circumstances because of the danger attached yeah. to the job. Mm -hmm. And it to me seems um, just just unfair that, that you wouldn't uh, uh, be able to claim injury uh, coverage, medical coverage, when you receive those injuries or that medical uh, problem because you were doing your job yeah. right. on behalf yes. of the people of this county. That's in right. principle, that seems wrong. Yes. So. Okay, uh, we'll vote him in. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that easy, honey. Oh, well, it's not easy. <laughs> uh, we'll vote for you. You have no idea easy. how much these guys are struggling here with this. Well, <laughs> you know, I'd like I'd like to raise something. You know, go, go prior, uh, prior to uh, Astorino taking office, Spano was his predecessor. It seemed to me, uh, firstly, I'm a, a property owner in Westchester. I had a house in Pleasantville, uh, or Mount Pleasant, and. Yep. Uh, for a quarter acre, it was uh, $20,000, $20, $22,000 a year just for a quarter acre. Good school district, I get it. 
Um, one of the things that Asarino has performed and has maintained and did his job at was stabilizing and actually keeping our property taxes down. Do you have a plan in effect? Well, let me challenge you on the premise. Mm -hmm. If you pay $20,000 in property taxes overall, that's your total property tax bill, 22, whatever you said, 20. 20. Let me make it easy call for it, me. Call it an easy 20. I'm going to say 20. Of your $20,000, how much are you paying to the county out of the 20? You know, I don't know. Well, I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. You're paying 5000 <laughs> You did your I research, don't know. Carmine. You know, I, I Great hate research. Okay, so, no, 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 this is important. This is important so you understand <laughs> what, the value of the rhetoric, <laughs> what the value of the rhetoric is. If you're paying $20,000 in a tax bill in most communities, Yonk is a bit different than the rest, but you're paying approximately 5000 to the county of Westchester, you're paying somewhere between 3500 to 4000 to your town and or city, and you're paying something like 11000 or whatever the, the difference is to your school district. When you look at your tax bill from year to year, I guarantee you your tax bill has gone up, no matter what any one of those components have said. Now, Rob will say, I kept your property taxes at zero. What he kept at zero was the property tax levy, which is one of three factors that go into how much you pay from year over year. The other two factors, and I know this is boring and deep in the weeds, no, but when somebody says now, something, you've got to know the specifics. So people understand. It's important to know. Mm -hmm. right. So your property tax levy, the equalization rate between the various communities, and the assessment role of the community you live in has a role into how much you pay. What I mean is this. Let's say you live in a community where they have had uh, lots of development. Uh, they built a big complex, and that new complex is paying more taxes in your portion of the assessment role for that community has gone down because there's more tax rates coming in from other people. On the reverse side, if your tax base has shrunk, your personal role on your property has increased within that assessment role. Then when you compare your community to your community to my community to your community, there is a percentage that gets uh, handled through the state and the county tax commission that, that puts together a percentage of how much your community is paying of the total county tax roll in mind. That number goes up and down each year, equalization. So if there's a zero on a property tax levy, let's assume that that is true, but the other two variables go up and down, you take out your 2015 tax bill and you look at your 2016 tax bill and you may see that your county taxes went up. Maybe a little bit, maybe a lot, maybe it was even, maybe it went down a little bit. But it's not assured that just because of what the county tax levy was that your property taxes went down. Now, if you're telling me that you went and looked at those things over the last seven years and you said, George, I looked at uh, 10, 11, 12, well, it'll be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I'm telling you the thing was zero, it didn't move a mi minute, that's one thing, but, but that ain't the case. So what I'm saying is this. When we begin the discussion, what is my plan looking forward? My plan is to be pragmatic about the things that the county government has to do and make sure that we are not making bad long-term decisions. In the short term, if we don't have to raise property tax levy, I'm not going to raise property tax levy. But I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do a deal with the airport that's a one-shot deal that keeps your number down for one year but has a balloon impact a couple of years down the line. That's bad policy. I'm not going to keep your, your tax here this one year, overestimate the sales tax, and then find out in the middle of the year we've got a big budget crisis, now we're going to have to cut back bus routes, or we're going to have to close pools, or whatever it is you would do to deal with that kind of a crisis in the middle of the year. And, and what I also want to say in terms of being pragmatic, we, we've had a policy, and our bond rating has gone from AAA to AA and change. That means it costs us more money to borrow. That's not good, prudent discussion. Now, that sounds like esoteric. Let me put it in everyday terms. If you go to the grocery store and you buy your grocery, not on a debit card, but on a credit card, and you do that every week, you got a problem. If you're going to go into your savings account and every month and you're going to use it to pay for a rent payment or a mortgage payment, you got a problem. You got a structural imbalance between the money that's coming in and the money you got to send out every month. If you overestimate revenue, like I said about sales tax, that's like saying, well, honey, Christmas time, Aunt Millie is going to give us 200 bucks for Christmas. How do you know that? Well, she generally gives us some money. I'm going to count on 200 bucks, and that's going to pay the Con Edison bill and the telephone. You know, you're, you're estimating revenue that's not for sure there. So what I'm going to argue in this campaign, I'm arguing it here today, is that you need to know a heck of a lot more about how the county's finances are being run before you can sit there and say, 
they've done a good job on the finances because I don't believe we have. I think we've done things to look good in the short term right. and people yeah. saying, hey, yeah. that's good. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the surprise is coming. And when the surprise comes, maybe I'm not there to be the one having to deal with the surprise. Maybe I'm governor. Maybe just, I'm I, on Fox I, News. I don't know where I am. I, 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 I just walked in the room. I just walked in the room. But a lot of what you said sounded like the city of Mount Vernon. Like, yeah. I'm just does, as budget does, it, does this, yeah, I'm, I don't know if you saw the, the, the uh, low HUD. That is a fourteen million budget that's deficit yeah, that's what projected I had for Westchester County. Fourteen point three million. Can, right. Can you expound on maybe why or or what is? Well, I read the article like you did, and, right. I, and I'd have to be privy to the internal reports that they were. Right. I, I made a for one example. <clears throat> I made the comment about overestimating sales tax revenue. Right. Sales tax is is a guess. You're making a guess on how much people are going to go shopping and you're multiplying that by the rate and you're saying it's going to produce this much revenue. In a budget, you make a general projection. This budget projected 3% increase in sales tax revenue. Now, one of two things can happen. Either the cost of everything goes up by that much and the same amount of volume produces more money mm. or the amount of volume increases at the same rate and you make more money. Everything I see when I talk to merchants they're telling me more and more people are buying online and they're not coming into the stores and right. not getting a foot traffic as much. Right. So I'm saying, how do you project a 3% increase? Do you think that, uh, for example, our gasoline price is going to go up? Because about 15% of your sales tax revenue comes from gasoline when you go pump right. and the right. amount of that taxes that go back wow. to the thing. So yeah. when you understand what comprises the revenue, then you make an estimate. Now. I'm talking about something maybe you don't know about that stuff, but you make, a, you make an estimate in your business life. Let's say you're a cab driver, and you say, if I, have, if I work an eight-hour shift, I'm going to have these many calls, and I'm going to make this much money. I don't have a guaranteed paycheck every week, but if I, do this many, uh, if, if I do these many trips, I have this much thing. Now, you get into a month or two, and all of a sudden it's dropping. Why is it dropping? Uber. Uber is taking business away from you. Right. Well, what are you going to do with that? You have now less revenue than you expected to have. You now have a budget gap in the middle of your year. That's what you have in the county. Mm -hmm. What do you do as an individual? Take a second job. Uh, you uh, do some work on a weekends for a friend, and he pays you a few bucks. Whatever you can do to make a few extra dollars. Right. The county can't do that. The county can't restructure taxes halfway through the year if they've okay. set in place. So what you're going to wind up doing is having to cut spending in order to fill that budget gap. Now, I read the article, and the article says, well, it's all going to work out at the end of the year. Maybe it will, and if it does, okay. Maybe it doesn't, because maybe that overestimation of sales tax is only going to get worse as the year goes along. There's no way to know it. But going back to the question you asked me, what, what do I want to do? I want to have intelligent, prudent business decisions when it comes to these financial things. I've spent 20 years in corporate America. I was in marketing, not in finance, but finance is a part of what you have to do every day. And sometimes people have to hear the bad news. We're mandated to provide help to people through uh, social services. We, we have a bus service that helps poor people get to work and get to school. We just can't say, listen, nothing matters but taxes. Everything else be damned. If we're going to close the Spring Book Pool, it's just going to stay closed. And that's the way it's going to be in the North part of Yonkers. And, and that's what happens when you make one thing your goal and only one thing, mm -hmm. which is taxes. Then when you find out it's only 5000 out of your $20,000 tax bill, and you say, well, if it went up 1%, what would that have been? It would have been 1% on $5,000, which is 50 bucks. Is that what it was? That's the truth. 1%. Let, me, let, me ask, let me ask you a question. You were talking about services, and, you know, you grew up in Mount Vernon. Um, we, we had a situation where we saw the, um, the bringing in the zero budget last year. Um, one of the cuts was the, prob was the, probation, the probation office, the probation office in Mount Vernon. And not to be funny, there's probably more of a need for a probation office in Mount Vernon than mm -hmm. other places in the county. Right. So, you know, then they said they had to cut. It was because of budget cuts. But then they expanded the building in Peekskill right. and hired nine new people there. So it, it, that kind of doesn't matter. It, like, you know, it, Mount Vernon is like um, a lot of people are – it's a dumping ground. So, so you know, you, you have you, – you're sending the people here, but you're then providing less services. Right. Uh, the um, – um, we had a lot of uh, homicides in the last shooting, street shootings, and um, Mount Vernon, a couple of them died on the way to other hospitals because Mount Vernon right. does not have a trauma center, but Mount Vernon has Mount more Mount trauma Hospital, yeah. than the rest of the country. Wow. We now yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. a probation office. They cut, what else they cut, uh, what else did they just cut recently um, from Mount Vernon in the last couple What's of years? What's left? 
they, well, it was, well, well they I'm have, saying that you're taking away well, the services, and, and, and but and, you're dumping the people, right. and you know it's it's providing. That's why we have some of the the crime and the other things that we have because of that. Right. Well, and and what happens in Westchester County, in my judgment, it's opinion. It's not. I can't prove this fact, mm -hmm. but. People look at aggregate figures for the county, and they say, our economic development in Westchester County is booming, and it is countywide. You go down 287, and you see the businesses and the corporate headquarters. Mm -hmm. Now, there's some vacancies. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be good economic development. What I'm going to do, I'm going to fill more of those buildings. We're going to come up with deals to fill them up, and there's going to be good jobs. That's fine. But that's not the whole economy of Westchester County. Right. The economy of Westchester County includes, in, in Yonkers and in Mount Vernon, small factories. My mom worked in those factories on McQuestion Parkway, Reliable Sprinkler, mm -hmm. Lumar Industries, mm -hmm. where she did mm -hmm. the screws to your, like your glass frame. Right, right. She did the screws to them frames, and she handed it to the next woman who did something else with the frames. And, and small little companies like that, those things have left Mount Vernon, and they've left Yonkers, and they've moved to other places. So the economic development that Westchester needs is not just, oh, we booked big corporation to move into two eight, off the 287. We need economic development in Mount Vernon and in Yonkers. Now, we do that in partnership with the local government. We don't come in and say, we're the bosses, we're going to bigfoot you. But we go out to the mayors and the councils and the local folk, and we say, we, the county, want to work with you and partner with you because what we need is not just to be able to give you a, a countywide statistic of economic development, but we need to target that economic development because if Mount Vernon is going to turn around, it's going to turn around because there are jobs there that people can take. And it may be true that there are folks who do not have a college degree, but they still need to work, and they mm -hmm. still need to have productive work. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be working uh, for uh, major corporate headquarters, but they, they can work in the kind of factory that my mom worked in. Mm -hmm. And my dad was a maintenance man. That's what he did for his life's work. He uh, was ma head of maintenance at Beach Point Club in Mamaroneck. And, and in those days, they made enough money to buy a house on South 14th Avenue so I could go to school and be a commuter and go to college. Well, the people who live in that same house have to have the same opportunity. Our skin color is not the same, but the need and the desire is the same desire. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the county has to do. So I'm not saying that taxes are good, we should just raise taxes, but we have to be honest about what actually has happened. And because we did that, what other opportunities did we miss doing that meant that some other people who maybe don't even pay property taxes are finding themselves in a more difficult situation. Well, that's the whole thing. Oh, I, 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 I want, one, one thing I wanted to bring up, too. Um, we, had a, um, we have a, a young lady from Yonkers. Um, she's a homeless in this ab advocate, and um, she's writing a series of articles, and um, she's been on here, Lauren Case. And um, one thing she told us about, it was uh, something I didn't know. We have a large percentage, a growing percentage of Working homeless mm -hmm. people that have jobs nine to five, their kids go to school, but they don't have nowhere to live. Like I, I didn't know. Like the county will not let you know that this exists in the county of Westchester, one of the ten, in the top ten richest counties in the in the, in the country. You know what I'm saying? But we mm -hmm. have working homeless. We, you know what I'm saying? And there's another. Sure. Sure. She she brings out all the cuts every year. And every, there's all these cuts to the homeless shelters and. But the, you know what I'm saying? So right. it's like... Well, yeah, and you've had two things that you've seen. One positive that, that I think we and the state government in general take credit for, which is the raising of the minimum wage. The, the minimum wage is slowly rising from what was a $7 wage when I first went into the state legislature, ultimately to a $15 wage. Now, a minimum wage job is not going to make you wealthy. It's not going to help you do all the things in life that you want, but it gives you something that you can anchor onto and move forward from. On the other side of this... Uh, we have had a devil of a time getting affordable housing, you know, programs where we want it in Westchester County. Yeah, we, As they, a county they government, all of those we, to fought, too. we fought the feds every <laughs> step of the way. And, uh, you know, and, and by the way, there were many communities, White Plains, Port Chester, Mermanic Village, Greenberg, Nourishell, Yonkers, that were doing their fair share for affordable housing, more than their fair share. We went to court and sue and all this other stuff because there were other communities that were not doing their fair share. And then when given an opportunity to comply, Larchmont complied, Rye complied, uh, they changed some zoning in Mamaroneck Town and Village Road. So what was the fight for? The fight was over theory, over ideology. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't want the Obama administration to tell us what to do in our county. Well, wait a minute. We're trying to help people with affordable housing opportunity. That's what we're trying to do here. And so my attitude was when I saw that some of these communities were willing to do their fair share, then, then why were we fighting the federal government? And that is part of the legacy of the last eight years as well. You know, and my attitude, I'll be very honest with you, uh, I live over, you know, the other side of the county, so I'm going to drive to New Rochelle, 
park my car in that big parking garage, go downstairs, buy an Amtrak ticket, get on the Amtrak and Nurse Show, go to Union Station, go downstairs, take the red line, change the Metro Center to the yellow line, go up at Lanfont Plaza, which <laughs> is where HUD has their headquarters, go into whatever office floor they're in, you know, ring the doorbell. Hi, I'm George Latimer. I'm the new county executive in Westchester County. Let's get this thing solved. Let's stop being in the headlines how Westchester doesn't want to do this, that, and the other thing. Now, that doesn't mean I'm going to capitulate to everything you want. Right. We'll negotiate. Right. Let's get this behind us yes. because we, have, we cannot keep fighting and losing community development block, block grant money and, and losing these opportunities can, and fighting over this. Can thing. you speak on that? Because a lot of people don't know that there's a lot of monies that's being lost. Yeah, we've lost in, a lot of grant money. In, 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 in the process that goes to a lot of communities because of this whole back and forth with, with with the federal government. The number I've heard, and, and you know, again, I, like you said a few minutes ago when you were making a, a, an estimate, your understanding of it, my understanding mm -hmm. is we've lost as much as $10 million mm -hmm. in grant money that would go for a variety of things. You've had the smaller communities in Westchester County join in with an urban uh, development uh, grant program, CDBG, Urban mm -hmm. Consortium Grant mm -hmm. Program. The minute we were fighting with the feds, the feds says, well, guess what we ain't doing? We ain't doing that. And money from those, uh, from that resources, went to help uh, downtown and Mamanic Village and other places and so forth. That money stopped, dried right up. Some of it, like Section 8 money, had to be administered through the state because the feds wouldn't deal with Westchester. They deal with the state, and mm -hmm. then the state would have to come down and do these administrations. So we lost money by being able to do that. Now, let me tell you, in the beginning, I didn't think that the deal that was struck in the fall of 09 was an ideal deal either. But what I would have said at the time is not we're going to fight you in court every step of the way. I'd say we want to renegotiate this. And we're coming down. We're going to bring a team of people. Get some smart lawyers. I'm not a lawyer, so get some smart lawyers there. And we're going to negotiate back and forth and back and forth. Then I call Chuck Schumer and say, Chuck, talk to these dudes. You're a powerful senator. We want to do a deal, but some of these elements of the deal isn't right. Let's work this thing out until we can get a deal. Mm -hmm. My sense is if we took that attitude, we would have avoided all of the stuff that has happened since then. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can't go back in time. Right. Here's right. where you are now. And, uh, you know, if they just recently had a position uh, of criticizing us because we wouldn't do this um, document that identified impediments to affordable housing, we, like, didn't do the right document back up. We're still fighting them. And, and we, we have to get past fighting. We've got to get to some sort of reasonable, principled compromise. We actually closed several homeless shelters in in Yonkers, as a matter of fact. That's, that's so now what, we've got people in the said. streets. Oh, my that's, that's God. We actually that's went in, in the middle of the night on a very cold day and started taking people out of one of the homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. The Yonkers boys covered that. You know, speaking... And they did that near a shelter, too, just so you know. Yeah. I had a question? I'm sorry. Well, oh, no, you, we're going to continue with the homeless thing. Go ahead. Well, no, what it, what it brought me to was education. And... It, it, Education affects the majority of Westchester. It's one of the most controversial phrases is common core. You know, you're seeing signs up at the school saying opt out. Uh, I think education is a key to success in anybody's life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these children are getting cheated out of a good education due to a policy. Uh, Astorino called it Governor uh, uh, Cuomo common core. We know that's not true. Well, what is your take on Common Core? Now we can shake hands you know? on one here because well, I think the whole Common Core thing on something else. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna the Common Core thing has been a mess, and it was some guys sitting around figuring out how we're going to redo everything when none of that stuff was what was necessary. My general opinion, in so far, Common Core has come to mean a lot of different things in terms of policy. I don't think that changing the way teachers teach to telling them lecture and test and standard testing in third grade, in fourth grade, all the way up, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Right. Little kids of that age, they learn differently. They learn by doing stuff. Take them to the botanical gardens and let them see plants and understand mm -hmm. what that is. Or take them to the board of legislators for a mock legislative session mm -hmm. where they can sit and they'll see, oh, now I start to understand this is fun. This concept, which was part of Common Core, to me was totally, uh, totally wrong directed, done by people that don't spend time in the classroom. It didn't come bottom up from the parents and the teachers and the folks who would have who, who would have structured something completely different. A part of Common Core that we didn't implement in New York, but as part of the National Common Core, was uh, data information. And I thought that was all very obtrusive stuff. You talk about mm -hmm. privacy, wanting 400 data points for every kid, and we're going to track with it. What, what, what are you tracking this for? What is that going to do to help improve their education? I'm going to say it's going to improve education. Money and strategies. You, and, and I'm a graduate of the Mount Vernon Public School System, Grimes Elementary. It used to be called Washington when it was a junior high school. I think it's Thornton now. Thornton, yeah. Uh, yeah. I went to 
Amy Davis when it was just ninth graders, uh, and then uh, and then the new high school on California Road when it was new, <laughs> and and a little different than today. Yes. And so I'm not speaking out of the top of my hat. I went through an urban school district, admittedly, 40 some odd years ago, but the bottom line is there are kids who walk into the classroom on day one in kindergarten who didn't have preschool, nursery school. If you have that in Bronxville, that's good. If you have it in Armonk, that's good. But if you don't have it in Yonkers, then you have to put something in place because those kids are walking in there behind the eight ball. Right. And then Just you're going to test one, them. Right. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. You test them, they're not going to perform as well mm. right off the bat. When they right. go home at night, little Jimmy goes home to a house where their parents can buy him a laptop. Little Johnny goes home. There's no parent laptop, nothing going on right, there. Right, right. Right. Little right, Jimmy right. on on week vacation goes to Europe. He goes to see the Louvre <laughs> and the mm, mm, and, and the right. uh, Mona Lisa. Right. Yeah, and yeah. little yeah, yeah. Johnny is in the street like I was messing around. Right. So test Jimmy and Johnny with your Common Core and tell me what's going to happen. I'll tell you what's going to happen. So yeah. I think the whole thing has been a misdirection and it's got to be redirected into a more normal, practical, bottom-up system. And can we feed our children? Regular lunches. Just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'm, I'm just showing you what a parent put up on the Yonkers Voice. Okay. That's that was a, their lunch. This was lunch? That was lunch. Yeah, that was there, lunch. There's, there's one that that's, was that's worse than that. That's how they serve lunch. There was one worse than that. There was one worse, than, was than, one worse oh than that. There was one with just you know, four things a, in it. and. It was That's atrocious. Yeah. Can you send me the link? Can you send me a link so I can put it on the screen? Can you send me the link to that so I can put it on the screen? I will send that. Yes, I will. Wow. Okay. Um, I do want to give a prop, though, on, on, on just something a little separate. You know, I was reading, and I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but you did introduce a bill, it appears, that when you become a, an elected official, if you're going to work outside of the confines of, of, of your job, of what you're elected to do, that your second job can only account for 15% right. of your income. Is that right? Yes. Can you tell us a little more about yeah, that? Yeah, very you simply. Know, guys, that's, an, that's pretty important. Yes. You know, you got to show up for votes. you gotta, you got to do your job. And I think, I think at least with the Yonkers voice, and I think everybody sitting in this room equally sees how important that is. Right. What you have happening in Albany uh, is a conga line of scandals. I mean, it's, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and, and let me tell you what. I, I, may be a, I may be a Democrat. You know, dun, 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 dun. And, and I may be a Democrat, but Democrats just as dirty hands as, as anybody else. Oh, so it's not my party. Your party. He's oh. got a vote. He, oh. a, a, a Democrat that admits it. <laughs> <laughs> truth is the truth. And, and one of the common threads, that the, and by the way, it's always creative, you know. As you, if you ever deal with criminals, you know, you know that they come up with creative ways to do these things. Well, these guys came up with every way under the sun to cheat and steal and lie. And the and the consistent factor in every one of these things is, is they were conflicted. They had some other interest that was, you know, calling their name. And so you cannot have the situation as you have now, where senators and assemblymen get this salary, and then they can go out and have all these other dealings and raise all this other money because these other interests have their interests at stake. And is the guy or the girl that you're sitting in that chair are they doing the public interest or are they doing the private yeah, interest? That's right. And they can right, hide it. Right. Yeah, yeah. They can hide it. Right. Right. partners yeah. in the business. Yep. You get the business. Oh, I didn't do the business. Mm -hmm. Your right. partner did, exactly. or your partner's husband got hired for a job. I don't know about anything. You know, <laughs> you know, and so that kind of stuff has, has got to stop. And I'll tell you what, if it doesn't stop what I said at the front end, and I said it very honestly, I know that people don't trust us. I know that they think we're all crooks. I know that. I feel it. Mm -hmm. I talk to people, you know, who, who never met me before, and they look at you like, what's your game? You can just see it in their face. Right, right, you know? right. And if we don't do stuff like that and more, we're never going to have the confidence of people. Never. Fortunately, that's the culture of the country now. <laughs> that's and and you can tell that by the elections. Exactly. Right. Okay. Culture people are tired. Right they want they right. want what's what they want and they yeah. want it now. Right. Um, and and well, they were tired before Trump, and look what happened. Laura, you had a question. You said right. You yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to talk more about the community and yeah. about uh, you know you were talking about homelessness, and then I just thought about that. You just a couple of days ago we lost another woman in a fire in Yonkers. Yeah. And back when I was working for the city of Yonkers, I had a dis uh, Yonkers disaster relief team. It's no longer there, but we would help, you know, those folks that, you know, we would help with the funerals, we would help with relocations, and, 
just last year, there was another fire on, I believe it was on Bronx River Road where 54 families mm -hmm. lost their homes as well. And, and some of these folks are still haven't been able to recoup and, and living with their parents and things. And, and I know that you put in a, some type of legislation for a disaster task force. Mm -hmm. What exactly is that? Well, uh, I, what we were looking at was the more broad-based disaster, the kind of things where are we ready for a hurricane to hit us straight on, which okay. the answer is we're not. No. <laughs> uh, and, and what would happen if we had, you know, we don't think of like having a terrorist earth attack. Well, terrorist attack or, or earthquake. We don't think earthquakes, that's California, but we have fault lines that run through this county. And just because they haven't rumbled in the last, you know, I've been on the planet 63 years, just because it hasn't happened while I've been around doesn't mean that it can't happen in the future. And many times, and you hear this all the time, 9-11, every other thing, we talk all the time after something happens, oh, we could have, should have, would have done these things. And, and what I want to see us do is, is do more of the advanced planning what-if scenarios. Correct. And you see some of that going on. What happens if there's a, uh, a plane crash at the airport and they'll do like a mock drill yeah. where, where people will be live playing, you know, playing like they land down on the runway and all that stuff. But, but that's, that was the purpose of it. It was more and more broad-based disaster rather than the individual thing that happens I in an apartment you. building and stuff. Uh, because I think what 9-11 taught us is that no matter how ready we think we are for something, something can happen the next morning that we didn't plan on. And we, had better, we better have people who are prepared to deal with those things. I'm not saying we don't have any of that. I just don't know that we have enough of it. You know? speaking, speaking of which, uh, in February there was an evacuation of two JCCs. Yep. One in New Rochelle. What, what is JCC for the, for the listener? That's the uh, Jewish Community Centers. Okay. Got a bill on it's that just too. not Jewish. Yep. Yep. It, they, yes. you know, it's, it's, it's for children. Right, it's right, right. daycare for children. Okay. It's run by the JCC. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was one in New Rochelle. There was another in uh, Terrytown on the same day. Uh, we know you support the JCCH uh, hate crime bill. Actually, that's my bill. Uh, yeah. Uh, and <laughs> what here's what, what it does the bill exactly entail? Here's what it does. And and amend what is currently in place. Okay. What what the bill that I uh, uh, put out was, and I'm I'm happy to say that every Democrat and every IDC senator has signed on to the bill. Uh, we need some Republican support to move it in the Senate because they're in the majority. What the bill does is it takes a community center that's attached to a religious institution and it makes a hate crime against that community center uh, covered under the same current language that applies if you attack a church itself or a synagogue. So let's say you go over to um, uh, Shiloh Baptist Church, Sensational Shiloh on Lincoln Avenue in New Rochelle. Rochelle. You have a church yeah. building mm -hmm. and then you have, a, you have a center in the back. There's housing in it and there's a community room. That isn't covered under hate crime. So if somebody comes in there and does something that clearly is anti-African American, then uh, they should be able to face the same criminal penalties, the same district attorney going after you if they did it to the center as they would do it if they did it to the church, mm -hmm. even though there's no religious institution there. Right. Now, you the Jewish community there. centers uh, that you mentioned were part of that. Yeah. Uh, there's the Don Bosco Center in downtown Porchester that's uh, a part of the Holy Rosary Catholic Church thing. So it's not this religion or that religion. It's an across-the-board thing. And it's not just based on religion. It's based on all the different categories, color, uh, you name it, whatever the, whatever the factor is. And, and all we're saying here is that when you, when you produce a hate crime, there's a crime in its, in its core, but it's even worse as a hate crime because it's not just you, you, you hurt somebody, you hurt them because they are black, because they are Jewish, or because they are Catholic. And that we find even more objectionable mm -hmm. than just the fact that it was an assault or a bad behavior. Now, um, so what that does, to answer your whole core question, it expands the definition of a hate crime by adding a separate category that, that is covered under the hate crime. And then, of course, uh, case by case, uh, a, dis a, a police office, uh, the police department, well, you're not law and order. They, they'd apprehend the criminal, and then the DA would go after the criminal, don't, don't, and, and it, would, it would proceed this way. I don't know that it sounds very good. No, I, guess, yeah. I, I, I have a question. I'm trying to be an interesting guest here. You know? <laughs> I'm um, sure you, you cringe. You're doing, no, 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 you're doing, you're, you're, you're you doing got, a great hey, job. You got me turned. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not easy. <laughs> that's not right. That's not easy. There, there's, um, there have been recent issues um, with mentally ill um, people being um, <laughs> killed, actually some shot and some killed by police, and then finding out that they are not trained in dealing with mentally ill people. And um, what came out of a, a couple of these shootings that the crisis um, intervention team right. was cut the county was cut right. to mon to just Monday through Friday and nine to five 
So, you know, and a lot really? of these issues, yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, a lot of these issues yeah. happen at night and the weekends. Right, you right, at night and the weekends. Right, so as, as county exec, what, you know, running for county exec and going and being elected to county exec, what, what, what would you do to... Well, the hope is that, and this mm -hmm. goes back to the budgetary question you asked me mm -hmm. a while ago, right. you have to find the money and it just, right. just doesn't come out on trees. We right. have to figure out how to reallocate money in order to reestablish that. Right. And, and, of course, when you talk about the mental ill situation, the totality of the society, not just the county, the state, all mm -hmm. of us, we have, we have not done the right thing by folks who have mental issues. Many of the people who are homeless actually have severe mental Ill right. issues. Mm -hmm. right. It's not just they can't find a house, but they can't function in this complicated society that we're in. Mm -hmm. And ever since, uh, I guess, Willowbrook, 50 years, yeah. almost 50 years ago, we saw the horrors in, in, in a nursing home. So let's deinstitutionalize it. But we had no place for those folks to land. We said we'd have some community homes, and there's not enough of them. Yeah. And, and, you know, when a community home comes in somebody's neighborhood, they're not right. wanting it. You right. know, and they fight it, and, and sometimes it works out, but sometimes it doesn't because, you know, you, these, these folk need medical things to, to help them focus, and you need people watching them and working with them and all this. You just can't dump people and warehouse them or, you know, right. dump them off. And we've never responded to the full reality of it. So some of that's really a state issue as much as it's a county issue. But mm -hmm. going back to the crisis intervention team, like you said, uh, and these things don't happen just because there's a 9 to 5 clock. In fact, more often than that, it happens the rest of the time. Right. You hear stories about, like, Super Bowl Sunday is a day with when these issues really spike up. Mm -hmm. You know, people are drinking. People are in a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a male testosterone environment mm -hmm. watching a mm -hmm. football game. And somebody can't handle that moment. And right. next thing you know, somebody's knocking on a door. You don't say on the other side of the door the right thing. Guns come out. Right. And, and, and bad things happen in a hurry. So the answer to the question is to determine... How we find necessary money have to cost it out to reestablish these teams in some fashion. It may not be we can go back to having as many of them as we had in every location, right. but wherever the concentration of the situation is, this would be more of a priority. But in all fairness, in, in order to, to really stand by that, I've got to be able further into the campaign mm. to, to be able to come out, as you suggested, with a full game plan yeah, of everything right, I would do. Right, of and course. so that you would know how it's costed out. It's not just right. words, I want to do this, right. but it would be put into uh, something you could look at and you can say, well, that's a plausible set mm -hmm. of decisions. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and to, and to piggyback on that, um, the correction officers are encountering a huge problem with dealing with the mentally ill. That's what I want right, to say. Right, mm -hmm. because they're coming in. With the closing mm -hmm. of... Mm -hmm. of, 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 of the state the, hospitals the Pilgrim and state, downsizing. Pil Pilgrim State in Long Island and the one upstate. And yes. They're closing all of them. Where are these people going to go? And they may they, end they're up coming right yeah. to the jail and the training. And a lot of the officers are not prepared right. for that. Um, in our soul. And, we should and then they end up homeless. Right. You know, we should homeless. talk about that in some greater detail so I okay. can understand the size and the scope of it. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, um, you know, many times in the society, the things that, that we choose to ignore wind up being the job of police and correction officers. Right, absolutely. Because we say, like, I don't know, that guy over there is going crazy, and then we walk out of it, and the police officer has to come in and figure out how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Or in the case of inside a, you know, an incarcerated circumstance, the correction officers would. So uh, I, I would say off off mic, yes. we sit down and have a coffee absolutely. or something to help me understand absolutely. the, the scope I have of the to problem. Say thank you for saying that. Senator, because a lot of elected officials don't look at correction officers and their job as being dangerous because everything that happens is behind the wall. It's not on the media. Right. It's not put on the news. You know, and I appreciate you acknowledging I have that. friends of mine who are correction officers or, you know, given my age, many of them retired now, to mm -hmm. be honest with you, but guys who were active as correction officers and probation officers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, they'll tell stories. to take the names away, but they'll tell stories. You're like, man, how did you deal with that? It, it's really... You know, you deal with some real rough, bad people. Yeah, fifth and of gin. Man. <laughs> <laughs> fifth of gin. <laughs> As one guy told me once, he said, you know, in your, because I, you know, my career is in sales and marketing right. and all that stuff. He says, the guys you're dealing with, they have clean fingernails and American Express cards. Yep. Right, and right. And he said, they're dangerous. And I said, yeah, you're right, they are. <laughs> imagine the guys I deal with, and I said, oh, imagine me. Right. you got a job that I could never <laughs> do in a million years. Well, I thank you, Senator, for acknowledging that. That's sir. the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Thank That's you. cool. Easy enough. You, you know, talking about ment mentally ill, and I'm not going to say that they're mentally ill, but you, you put a bill out, a, a Bill 1948 to be exact, 
um, requiring In all... 1948? No, no, no. no. The bill. <laughs> I, just, I just want to clarify <laughs> that for the listener. That's when I was born. That's when I was born. Somebody's listening and saying, in 1948. No, no, but I can tell you... 12,000 bills. I can tell you a little bit about it because it's so important to the community. We have we have parents that our children have some type of mental issue. So many of them, hundreds of thousands right. of them. Mm -hmm. And you put out a bill requiring the state to review these children's cases 30 days, within 30 days, as opposed to, um, you know, when, when they go for services, whether it's Social Security disability or something like that. Um, and it, they have to wait a year, a year and a half to get the services. You put out a bill, or, or you sponsored yeah, a bill. Co-sponsored co that Co-sponsored a bill. Um, for, for the 30 days. Did that pass? It did not pass yet. Uh, in order for that bill to work, we need to have uh, people, more, more bodies, being able to do the work because to, to speed up the process, no, no one individual worker can handle beyond a certain number of cases. I, I don't know the number, 25, whatever the number is, 20. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the number of cases, the reason why there's a lag is because you have less people being able to analyze the cases. And because mm -hmm. we haven't sure. analyzed them quickly enough, bad things happen. Somebody's waiting to go through a process of assessment of how bad this guy is, and the guy does something, you know, and, and the horror and the tragedy that follows that. And, and in some cases, you know, uh, everybody knew that the guy was, like, not right, but, you know, I mean, and then, of course, the most classic examples is, you know, the guy who shot up all those poor little kids in Sandy Hook. Everybody would tell you that the guy wasn't right, but yeah. it, we, right. you know, the, it was Connecticut, but we didn't get around to whatever it is we had to do. And wow. there's, there's well, human thank beings you for being that are proactive. Killed. But, you know, so the bill has the right in intent. To pass it also means we have to put uh, enough people on staff to be More able to funding. do that kind of an analysis. And you've got to find the money and you've got to be able to put it within the context of a budget. One of the things uh, that, that I think is important in all these issues is that if you don't use a service, and this is a sense what you were saying about being behind a closed door. If you don't use the service, you don't even know it exists. And then when you look at how your money is being spent, it feels like your money is being spent for what you don't understand and doesn't affect you. And, and the truth of the matter is not everybody uses a county bus. Uh, not everybody has somebody that they know that's in the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm. Not everybody they know has somebody in their world that's mentally ill and has to interact with the mental health thing. But the county is responsible for doing a certain amount of those programs. And, and what you will get is people in part of the county saying, what's my county taxes going for? And when I start telling them these oh, things, yeah, their the attitude is, oh, well, that's no. not me. I'm not paying for that. Brother, it's a society. And if you don't deal <laughs> with <laughs> folks who are mentally ill, if you don't deal with people who have violent behavior, it might be you, you in the parking right. lot right. in yes. the that's Galleria right. yeah. when right. this guy right. goes. That's right. You know, you can't that's be right. sure that it won't be you. That's you know? right. So, but that's a hard connection to make because somebody's saying, listen, I'm working hard every day. Uh, I don't want my money going for that. And if that's their opinion, that's why you have elections. How many people feel that way versus how many people feel a different way? I want, I want to do something a little differently. A lot of times um, I ask in the last few minutes, you know, um, any contact numbers, any how people get in touch with you. And a lot of times the conversation gets so interesting in the end, we don't have time to do that. So you, you're getting it in. So now, okay. you know, um, um, how do people reach out to okay. you, find more about your platform? And, and is there anything we didn't ask you that you want to, you know, okay. explain about your platform? Well, on, on governmental issues, some of which what we've talked about is governmental issues, by mm -hmm. all means call me at my governmental office, which is in Port Chester, 934-5250. And if somebody has a constituent issue, there's somebody in my office assigned to do that, if somebody wants to talk about a legislate, legislative issue, that's mm -hmm. a separate person they can work with. And if they want to talk to me, I'm happy to talk to them. You know, I, I, I'm out in the field a lot because when I'm here, uh, I view my job as being out in the community, not just sitting in an office over there. But 934-5250 is the phone number. My email address is my last name, Latimer, with one T, Latimer at nysenate.gov. Right. Now, for folks who want to talk about my, um, you know, the, the political stuff where I'm running for office, you don't go through the government office for that because I'm by responsibility as senator. So I would say there's a different email address to reach out <laughs> to me to, which is my last name, first name, Latimer George, without punctuation, LatimerGeorge at gmail.com. So somebody says, what's your position on Indian Point? Send me an email. I'll write your response. Mm -hmm. If somebody says, what's your position on uh, barges on the Hudson? Send me an email, and I'll send you a response. 
as the campaign progresses, I suspect we'll have our website, uh, our political website, which is georgelatimer.com. Mm -hmm. We'll have more information on it. It's not much on it right now. We're really, in many ways, just getting geared up. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have some campaign offices and all that. And uh, there'll be debates. There'll be, uh, I assume Ken and I will continue to debate as we have already. Uh, should I win the primary and go on to the general election, you'll see Rob and I debate. Obviously, if it's kind of, you know, it's like this is like the bracketology of the NCAAs, you know. Right. <laughs> if you get past this team, you play that team in the next round. Uh, but there'll be debates. Uh, there'll be an opportunity. And the biggest thing, and it's been said by other people around the table, is understanding what the county government means to you. Because otherwise, if you don't make that connection, you won't care about any of this stuff. We'll have debates right. listened to or watched by a handful of people instead of by all the people that, in theory, would right. be affected mm -hmm. by it. And in this world, right now, with the Trump effect, you know, there are people now that are paying attention to government that didn't care before. Right. And right. now they're yeah. saying, well, yeah. what, what, what's up with that? Well, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, it's been going on for years, dude. Why do you think you have the conga line of corruption? Because you weren't paying attention. You right. know, that's reality. You know? And if people wanted to volunteer for you, they could reach you at, at LatimerGeorge at gmail.com. Okay, great. Send that great. one right away. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Mm. No, this is a funny question, so I'm not even going to ask you. I'm wearing a romper, and I wanted to know what he thought about <laughs> male know. rompers. Oh, no. That was it. It had nothing to do with government. <laughs> it's okay. You can break the ice. Let me tell you what. You're a beautiful Thank woman. You. You're a beautiful woman. Whatever you would wear would be uh, a gift to all of us men in this room. <laughs> what about male rompers? What's no, I don't question? like that. Man. No. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Not good with that. Men should wear men's clothes. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> don't you think, man? Are we together on that? <laughs> I had to ask. Uh, you know, t-shirt. But um, what about no jeans, the yeah. no rompers? That's right. How how can how can the Democratic Party? Get the grassroots involved. Get I mean, the we young, gotta, we get, gotta get, get out from an get, office get and we gotta people. go door to door. Yeah. yeah. That's the way it used to be done mm -hmm. years and years and years ago. You know, when you hear when I hear my parents talk about Roosevelt and Truman, or even as a kid growing up in Mount Vernon, somebody would come out, knock on a door, they talk to you, they'd have a, you know, maybe a picnic or something, and people would come to the picnic and you'd meet the people face to face. We've gotten in love with technology. Now we're gonna no offense because I'm on Facebook too. We're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna tweet them. And, mm -hmm. and we're gonna we're gonna like uh, target this uh, five of you. are Gonna take the third person, <laughs> and he's the persuadable universe. Right. We forgot that they're human beings. You got to talk to human beings. Right. And mm. the most important part, and I say this obviously, you know, as a white guy, you got to talk to people who aren't like you. You got to talk to folk yeah. and feel comfortable enough yeah. that you can look at them and talk yeah. to them. We're all human beings. Uh, I don't necessarily understand. Look, it's not possible for a white man to understand what it's like to grow up as a black man yeah. in this society. It's not possible. Yeah. Right. I grew up in a black neighbor. It's not possible. If you're Latino and I'm Anglo, I don't understand the pressures and the things that have happened to you. If I'm a guy, I'm not going to understand what a woman's going through. You go through different things. Right. But I have to try to understand. Right. And the only way I can try to understand is if we sit and talk and if I listen mm -hmm. to your story. And if I think about it, and then you say something to me, and I say, well, what if we did this? Is that, a, is that an answer? And out of that comes, you know, progress. Right. But it doesn't come, let's just send robocalls out, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, oh, right. hi, I'm Bill Clinton. I'm supporting George Latimer. I don't even know who he is, but I'm doing this robocall, <laughs> you know. I, right. You know, and you know, that's what politics well, I, has turned I, into. I, I agree. And from someone who does social media, I've done social media for some candidates, and I do it for businesses and stuff. It, it it is required because of the world we live in now, and it mm -hmm. does reach. But it, it there's nothing that takes the place of the going out and shaking someone's hand and speaking to someone because that's when you'd be like, oh man, and like it, L Lorraine talking to you right now, just yeah. something yeah. in her talk. She's like, oh, I like this guy. He's okay. Yeah. You know, this guy just, knew something about the, old school rap. Yeah. Bust the move. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, how did you know that? <laughs> I uh, was right on point too when you yeah, called yeah. in and we had Atlantic Star on that day. He was, like, was like, yeah, I like Atlantic Star. Yeah. <laughs> My plays, baby. <laughs> but but, it's, but, but then, then it does, it, 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 nothing takes place to the personal touch. Like, and you have to be able to navigate. Like, some of the young people, they, all they want to do is social media. Some of the old people, all they want to do is the personal touch. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't know how to no, understand you to social media. But you, right. you definitely need a good marriage of both right. and someone who can understand how they work. You know what I'm saying? And right, so, right. you know, th that's, that's very important these days. Well, you're right about that. And I think, th going back to your question about the Democratic Party as a group, uh, we will be able to do the modern technology because we have to. 
But if you're the head of the Democratic Party, you're saying, George, if you're going to be my candidate, I want you out there. I want you out in the streets. Mm -hmm. and, and help me, you know, you, because there are places that it's going to be hard for me to walk into myself alone. Uh, but but help, me, help me do that and, and, and help anybody do that. Because if we make those personal connections, then what I said up front about how they don't trust us and all that stuff, that will start to lessen. They'll start to lessen. Mm -hmm. It won't ever go away because, look, we're New Yorkers. You know how New Yorkers are. You know, we, we, we're suspicious until we're proven otherwise. I'll, I'll tell you a good example of somebody who knocked on doors. It wasn't in Westchester. It was in Putnam. And it was a race uh, with District Attorney Adam Levy and uh, Bob Tendy. Okay, Bob Tendy mm -hmm. had a very bare-bone budget, but he made a commitment. He went out. He met. He his, knocked on doors. He knocked on yeah. doors. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter to what time he had to do it. That man worked, and he won. So mm -hmm. I think it's I, th I think it's very important. In addition to social media, you get out. And you're a right. likable, likable guy, George. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know. so, so he's giving no you permission. I didn't wear my romper. <laughs> 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 you know, not doing that. <laughs> not, not singing Sugar Hill Gang. <laughs> 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 not a good look. <laughs> so any, look. <laughs> any last questions? Any questions? Any, anybody got any last questions? Yeah, if you, if you don't mind, Senator, sir. Um, I'm talking. With from Westchester Correctional Association. Yes. It's important to us that the safety of all officers, not just correctional officers, all law enforcement mm -hmm. officers throughout the country, not just Westchester County. And um, we're hoping that you, you feel the same way and you, you make that a priority in your race and if you happen to um, become county executive. Um, officers, they risk their lives every day, right. every day. I mean, I just mentioned earlier about stuff that happens behind the wall. People just don't understand because they don't, hear right. it, you know, but their lives are being put at, at risk every day, and it's just important, Westchester Correction Associates just want these elected officials right. to be aware and acknowledge that, um, and, and from well, when I've, when to I've talked today, to Alonzo, when I've talked to Alonzo West, he has, uh, you know, made, made that discussion in head-to-head -head phase, right? But if I want to go he, back, he has. I, I, well, well, <laughs> you may have, you I didn't may say have. that. See, I didn't say. Hold on. I'm only going by what I heard. Like, they, they, well, they, well, they, they made her say it. No. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked me. I want to give you. I want to give you what the specific was going back when I was on the county board. You mentioned about the county board legislators. Um, we, uh, we we were uh, told that the old penitentiary was uh, decrepit and deficient. So mm -hmm. we went and took a tour, and it was decrepit and deficient. Yes, it looked like yeah. something out of James Cagney, mm -hmm. Angel with Dirty Faces. And it was expensive to do that project. Mm -hmm. But we also understood, and you know, we were looking at designs, that if, that if you build a new facility and it's properly done with, with the bells and whistles, now it's 15 years old, so the bells and whistles are different then than they might be now, that this would allow the, the people operating the facility to be safer and to, and to deal with people more efficiently with modern systems. And so we did that. And, and that was the spending of money. But that's an example of listening to, in, uh, listening to it and also doing something concrete about yes. it, which mm -hmm. is building a new facility because the old facility just was not acceptable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think Joe, so, Joe Spano was the president. Yeah, Joe was president mm -hmm. in those days. President. And there was another fellow before him who was a big uh, it, uh, dude, uh, Irish dude. I, uh, I can't think of his name. Tom something maybe? I don't know. I yeah, don't his know. name was. It, was it Tom? I, could be I can't think of his name yeah. right now. It's I can see him as a big dude, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. When Joe was vice president, when he was president, right? Yeah. But my point, my point being that you know we do hear this uh, from from the folks that we're interacting with, and I guess the, the the key is is to try to turn the feeling into what what is the real uh, action that has to be taken. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and 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 in the case of 15 years ago, it was build a penitentiary. In this mm -hmm. case, it may be some other specific things, and that would help me understand how best to help you. Mm -hmm. We got to um so so um. Thanks to Brenda. As you um, said, all your numbers and addresses and email addresses, she shared them. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, Kevin Bunch from Mount Vernon, he said, great show. Learned a lot about Latimer. I'm mm -hmm. a believer. I believe, I believe. And, 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 and Nas and, and Duncan <laughs> said, hey, bros. Money earned in Mount Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bros. Right, so, so um, and we've got a few more minutes, but I just... Uh, Anybody else got any other questions? Um, no, he, he answered a lot of the questions. Yeah, he, 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 he did. He laid so it out. So what's going to do out. the? What's well, going to well, be let the? Let me ask a question. What yeah. are you doing with these Knicks now? Somebody help me out. Oh. Knicks. What are we doing with the Knicks? No offense, Lorraine. No, no, no. I, I it's okay. Bury them. Smart people. Right. <laughs> 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 well, Jackson got to go. Huh? That's it. I, you uh, know what? I don't think. Yeah, because I don't know Phil Jackson and the Knicks. Well, the 
you got, when you talk to the Knicks, first you guys saw with Dolan down. Uh, yeah, that's right. Right. And everything, yeah, that ain't everything change. has to do that's with true. Dolan. That's true. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? There's yeah, some good things. We had. Pat left because Dolan didn't give him the job that, that Phil has now. Right. Right. That's why Pat Rowley left. And he got that in Miami in, in a couple of championships. And Miami we've got never a couple been of championships the same since that happened. Right, and we got yeah. in Miami. Sorry, sorry. I no, to it's that. okay. I'm just Miami, I'm learning something. Miami, Miami got a couple of championships right after that too. You know, so yeah, they did. I think Dolan should actually just sell the Knicks. Huh? Get out of but, well, that, well, yeah. that, yeah. that, yeah. that yeah. is. Yeah. 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 But he's not going to. it's more ego with him. Yeah, it's not. He's not going to. And 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 I don't think you're going to have any. He because he's too hands on. He's too. Like what you call it, nitpicky. He's like over your shoulder. Like he doesn't he's hire like you and let you do your job. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, lets the Rangers, he lets the Rangers do what they want to do, and they've had some degree of success. He mm-hmm. just like lets the Rangers, like you know, you do your thing. Well, so yeah, he does do. But some with the, the Rangers, he's like in it, and yeah. 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 Oh well. Yeah. This Michael probably wasn't the last been. question you wanted. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this good. is when we talk about everything. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love talking sports. I love talking music. You know, I'm not just walking around talking politics like a robot. All right. So. No, that's great. We appreciate it, that. And, and oh, well, my question was politics. Go ahead. Okay. No. If, <laughs> if, or, if or when you win county executive, what's going to be your first order of business? Um, that's nice a very question. good nice question. question. Yep. Uh, I, and, you know, I can't really tell you. I, I think what I would look at, I assume the first thing I would do on the first day in the job, which would probably be January 2nd, would be to look at every executive order that's, that's currently in place and mm-hmm. determine if I like the executive order or didn't. And then, uh, you know, and this is what Trump did to Obama's pull executive Trump. order. <laughs> and I'd say, look, you know, that was, that was the way the other guy did it. I'm doing it a different way. Yeah. And I would think that'd probably be day one's worth of business, one issue thing, by issue. There, there, there is one thing I'd like to point. You know, we, we talk a lot about Mark Burner, and I've, I've grown up in the area. Um, and there's a lot of vacant houses, a lot of bad lenders who have stolen homes in foreclosures. We're supposed to help you know, modify, just never did their job. Courts didn't help these people. We have vacant, abandoned houses mm-hmm. in the Mount Vernon area. Is there anything that the county can actually do to help? I think it's really more the state's you know? role. The state governs banks, and, and so it would be the state putting in, and we have some things that we did a year ago uh, to help deal with these zombie houses. Right. right. Were you but were you there at the, at the press conference? Were you there when they the state came through? They 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 did something to yeah. shorten it, um, yeah. to short because it it takes like up to they was explaining it could take up to like almost five six years. Yeah, this, this and something that they put in yeah. is supposed to like shorten it in half the time or something. Like I can't oh, remember. They cool. had a big press conference. The state yeah. was there. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember the particulars of the whole I mean, thing. It would cure a lot of homelessness. You know, if we were able to put a program in 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 into place and. Regenerate some of these neighborhoods. Right. Well, doesn't and that make sense? The, the, the problem, the problem with the foreclosures. And it doesn't uh, have to be. Young, I mean, Mount Vernon. It, it's just everywhere. It's everywhere. Right, 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 right. You know, and these and these foreclosures. I mean, I, I've helped people in foreclosure. Right. I've watched people just get marched right out of their home. Wow. And it's and it's hideous. Wow. It's so so bad. Yeah. And the problem with foreclosure also is if my house on this block of six of us. If my house is going through a foreclosure battle for a year or two years and no one's maintaining it, and you're trying to sell your house next door right. to me, yep. well, your house next Property door to me, you got a big right. problem. You're going to lose money off Property of this. Value, so yeah. that's where, you know, my sense of but it. But I think it's more the state authority than the county authority. The state's got to come in and say, listen, whatever is happening to this house, there's a certain minimum level of things that have to be maintained in order for you to maintain your value on that street. I, I, I got one. More, I got one more question. Uh, one more question. This is a Mount Vernon question. So, as a for, um, uh, someone who grew up in Mount Vernon, yep, um, and someone who's you know, if you, if if you get into the office, county executive, what can you do, and what will you do to help Memorial Field? Oh. <laughs> 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 the last question. Uh, right? nice. I passed. I tell you, I have my. I had my high school graduation there. Uh, you know, I, I would love to say I played football there, but I was in the band. But, uh, but, you know, that field meant so much to us iconically. I'm not sure I understand why it has been the mess that it is. I know Lyndon Williams pretty well, so I'm going to take a page out of his book since he's the county legislator and say, Lyndon, if I'm the county legislator, if I'm the county legislator, county legislature, we're going to put together a pool of money for, for a, a, an effective fixing. Now, yes. there's dreams about doing other things. Right. Millions and millions of dollars that probably isn't available through the county or any place else. Right. But, but I would try to make sure, and then he, he may have gotten this already. Lyndon's a very effective dude. So if, if there's enough money there to make the, the redo 
then deal with the folk in City Hall and get this plan done. Because when I drive by and I see a pile of rubble in the middle, and then I read about somebody dumped in the middle of the night, how could this have happened? It did happen. Right. It did happen, and it's a mess, and it's got to be straightened uh -huh. out because it's a and it's, and it's bigger than function. just this administration. This was we did right. the Davis administration, the Clinton yeah, administration, right and a little bit of Blackwood. You know what I'm saying? It's like this is you know the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, I don't like That's that probably that. my <laughs> last comment. <for> the night. <laughs> Fix the Knicks and the gift that keeps on. giving. <laughs> Folks, thank you very much for having any, me. Any last, words? Any, last words? thank last, you. Thank last you. Last you words? No, no, I'm 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 good. I'm you know I I want to I want to thank the senator. But for coming on um, People Before Politics, Black Westchester. And as we tell everybody, you have an open door to our show, whatever message you need to get across. Um, just give us a call and we'll set the schedule. It's not a problem at all. Thank you. Real pleasure. Thank, thank you, Senator. Senator. Would, would, would yeah, you I, like I, to thank I have the to also say voice. thank you, everybody. You know, uh, it was a pleasure being here. I am looking forward to doing more stories with yes. you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, Yonkers Voice is definitely coming back. We yes. need to sit down. Oh, yeah, they've been. Uh, you know. Yeah and talk a little bit about what's going on on camera oh, right. and start working in unison. Absolutely. You know, right. and as, That's the key, and, unity. And as unity. Right. Everybody working That's together, right. getting this all right. You know, thanks again to you We're guys. We're glad you're here. And uh, we look forward to it. I'm, I'm normally behind the cap. And we thank, thank you guys. We thank, thank our thank lovely co-host for being here again. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. Thank you so yes. much, everyone. And, don't and I'll forget. be disappearing again. She'll be here. I'd oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Oh, no, yeah. He just pulled. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah, be yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming yeah, back, folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just popped in today. Yeah, yeah. He just made, he just made a brief appearance. You might not see him for another four weeks. And don't forget, <laughs> don't forget to like Latino Empowerment. Yes, okay. please like Latino Empowerment. Any, thank uh, you. any WCA, anything you want? Uh, just thank you for having us. And I'm um, looking forward to learning more about Senator Lattimore. And, um, you know, I'm very impressed. Okay. Um, it's my pleasure. Thank you, sir. You could be doing anything else, but you decided to ride with us, and we greatly appreciate it. This is Black Westchester Presents People Before Politics Radio every Sunday, 6 to 8, on InTheMixRadio.com. Until next week, our guest will be uh, Mike Cater, running for uh, City Yonkers President. City Council President. Peace. And they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. That any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. The votes that stick together is in a strategic position. 22 million black victims of Americanism are waking up. And they're gaining a new political consciousness, becoming politically mature. And as they become, uh, develop this political maturity, they're able to see the recent trends in these uh, political elections. That any minority that has a block of votes that stick together is in a strategic position. Hey, either way you go, that's who gets it. You're, you're in a position to determine who go to the White House and who stay in the doghouse. You're the one who has that power. You, you and I have never seen democracy. All we've seen is hypocrisy. When we open our eyes today and look around America, we see America not through the eyes of someone who has, who has enjoyed the fruits of Americanism. We see America through the eyes of someone who has been the victim of Americanism. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced only the American nightmare. We haven't benefited from America's democracy. We've only suffered from America's hypocrisy. And the generation that's coming up now can see it. And are not afraid to say 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 it. I'm not afraid to say.